if he gets an appointment, <laughs> everybody's saying he's going to get transportation. I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I see him like biding his time for maybe Senator because that, that, that's an, an appointment and then a special, uh, uh, an election afterwards. Yeah, well, everybody's going to have their hat in the ring, though, for that special election, so. Oh, well, you know, Feinstein might retire. And, but, well, we kept thinking, but we thought yeah. she was going to retire. She should have retired, in my opinion, and I supported her last time, but that was just terrible. Yeah. It was just um, awful. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I've, um, yeah, no, I, I have some, uh, some friends in, in different departments, and you know, it's, it's, it's kind of sad to see some of them like, you know, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like our department can't hire anyone. Like we're even lucky to keep retaining if, if we're lucky, because if we have to do more cuts, I will probably be one of the first ones to go because I'm new, newer. Oh, wow. So yeah. first in, first out, huh? Yep. First in, so first last out. In, last in, last in, first out. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I have somewhat a little bit more seniority in the city than my two other counterparts that were new. We got three of us got hired on mm. at the exact same date. Um, but I have a little bit more seniority in that I used to be, I used to work for the controller. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that, that gives me about, um, at almost a year worth of, uh, of time in the city. That's good. I mean, that yeah. every every bit helps here. Yeah. Um, so let's see how that goes. Um, unfortunately, they don't count other cities. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I don't know if you set it up, but the reminder email with the link in it, that was really great. It did? Did it work? Yeah, it worked. That's how I came in and I'm already named. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah no, that, I, I, I helped set it up in the beginning. I, I never even thought of it after I helped set it up weeks ago. It's just now it does it automatically. Which is great because um, I suddenly realized, you know, I wasn't here last month. I've been doing all this other stuff. Yeah. So I. Um... And then did you get my email? Uh, do you get my emails whenever I send it to the whole board? I don't know. When did you send it? Because if it was right Four, about the election. 4.30 p.m.? today yeah no i didn't get one from you at 4 30. Uh, let me check spam just in case let me yeah let me let me research what time i did send it um it was sent at 4 24 p.m to the whole board bcc uh for the uh, amendments and approved uh nope, I, I didn't get anything from you I didn't get any emails between 408 and 451, at least oh, in my no. main box, which is where yours should come. But I'm checking the other. Uh, let me let me forward it to you then, just in case. Um, I have too many tabs open. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, ever since when we, we were went digital. Phone we were doing phone banking and we were, no, I didn't get any emails in that, right in that time frame. Shockingly enough, I did not get any in, in any of the email boxes or any of the inboxes. What do you have for my email? Well, okay, I, I just forwarded to you right now. I just put FYI on it. Um, uh, definitely like, because I'll be presenting this to all of my NCs I email to, um, I have eight NCs and three of them already been emailed the updated bylaws. Um, to conform with the new uh, ordinances that were passed. Um, I don't think you have a good email for me or it's getting stuck somewhere because I did not get a forward from you either. No, okay, then. Um, let me see. So uh, the email that I have is the one from the Empower LA site and uh, that is the Westside NC Secretary at gmail.com. Oh yeah, so that no, that's um, that's for whoever's the secretary. That's not oh. me personally. Okay, then we got to do an update on rosters then. Thank you. Um, <laughs> In fact, I haven't. I, we have been having a rotating secretary, so I haven't handed that email 
uh, off to anybody, but I I don't get the. I mean, I, I have to sign in specially to get those. That's yeah. Thank you for letting me know about that one, then. <laughs> then that's the reason why you have not been receiving my emails. Mm -hmm. um, let me uh, let me go on the back end and see. As we're still waiting for more. Um, uh, board members to come. This is we're really early right now. Yeah, but I thought I'd better come on early to make sure I, um, in case there was something I needed to catch up on. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. And, um, Okay, so um, I have your first name, last name at gmail.com. That's it. Okay. I sent it. Did you oh, yeah, it? see, there's a whole bunch of emails from you here, but I just signed into it. But And an Empower LA monthly profile, planning with a bunch of stuff, but the, the thought was this would be kind of, this would be an email I would hand off to whoever was secretary after me. Yeah. But uh, did the first name, last name at gmail.com work? Yes, it did. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. That uh, my email, that email tend to be a little bit thorough. And <laughs> what yeah, I did I'm, exactly. I may have to read it later and really. No worries. Yeah, no, that's the reason why I have an email. Um, you know, you can always go back to it. It's not like right. a, an Instagram um, story where it's only there for 24 hours. Really? Are those only there for 24 hours? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, well, there was one Snapchat that was popular for a while. That was yeah. Only there um, for but like everything, then... you know, once you post it, it stays in their servers for at least five years. Ah. Yeah. Okay. One of the things I had to teach my students are like, careful. You should be careful when we put on Snapchat. Like, cause there've been employers that, that have reviewed social media and uh, as a career counselor, I had to advise them like, look, please be careful when you post on social media. Like. Yeah, people think it's, I, I know this young man, he was a, a, a volunteer with me at Stonewall. And for a while his Twitter handle indicated the position he prefers to take when he's having sex. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Yeah. And I'm like, and, and he's in grad school. I'm going, <sighs> when you graduate dear, somebody's going to go back and have a screenshot of that or look at it and go, that's yeah. not a look we want to have for our, our employees. Yeah. Hello, hey, Terry. Terry. There we go. Hello. Hello. Okay, so now Terry's host. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to, where's those people? Why is it doing this thing again? I don't want share. Let's share. I, 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 I screwed up again. No, you don't want to do now that. I'm going to Terry. everybody. Ay, ay, ay. I got to join the meeting again. <laughs> Terry, Where is can you it? Make there me... it is. There's participants. You're in, uh, Terry. You're in. I'm in, but now I have nobody on my screen. Okay. Okay. So, so Terry, uh, right now we could see your entire screen. Well, um, I can see nothing. Okay. No worries. No worries. No worries. So, what we're going to do is scroll out to the bottom. No, no, we're not going to click launch meeting. We're going to go down to the bottom to the tabs where it has the Microsoft window. It has the Outlook. There should yeah. be an icon that's a zoom icon towards the end of all those icons on the it's bottom. At the beginning, left. it's right there. We're, we're gonna click on the one that has no, there's two options that can pop up. There's two windows. The one on the right hand side says meeting controls. Click on that. And then on the top, there should be a bar, like a green. Uh, uh, it's way up bar. here. Yes. So you can click stop share right now. Oh, there, there you go. How can so I converse what, with Terry? So you? what happened was that 
when you do screen share, you also optimized it for video clips and that disables uh, or takes away your viewing of other videos or attendees or panelists videos. Okay, listen, Freddie, I can't hear. My granddaughter was we're, still hooked up to the thing. No, she was on this the other day and she probably made the, the sound lower because she had headsets on. Okay, I, I, can, I can guide you on that. So on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, there should be a timer. Um, the, 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 there isn't a clock and a little icon with a microphone or a speaker. I have on the left side where it has mute with the speaker. Well, that's in the Zoom. You want for your whole, well, you probably want for your whole computer, Terry. So looking at your screen in the bottom right-hand corner, doesn't it say the date and the time? The no, right I can't corner? see it when this is so big. Okay. Oh, so okay. Exit full screen then. So now how can, so I'm going to exit the full screen, I think. Yeah, now I can see it. All right, where's, uh... So right next to the date and the Yeah, time. I know where the thing is okay. now, like, got out of that. Yep, she had it down to eight. Oh, thank you, I couldn't hear it. Talk again. Hello, can, can you hear us? Now I can hear you. Okay, so now I go back here. There we are. So Perfect. Terry, can you make me the host, please? Yeah. I have to go. I learned how to do this. I go to Jane. I go to Moore. I make a host. And I say yes. Great. Perfect. And, and I'll make you a co-host. And I'll make Freddie a co-host. OK. And Joseph Roth is here. But we need to verify that this is Joseph. Can you raise your hand, Joseph? His hand went up. OK, he's in attendees. So Joseph Roth. Promote to panelist. Shannon, is this you? You can unmute yourself. It is, yes. Hi. Perfect. Promoting to panelists right now. So, Jane, what did you think about Sydney today? Uh, I haven't I haven't seen anything about Sydney. Did she announce? Mary? Yes. yes. Is yes. that you, Mary? Yeah, that's me. Okay. And uh, Joseph, I just saw your email right now. I'm sorry I couldn't answer it earlier. Um, I was focused on uh, the, the email that I just sent out at 4.30 p.m. The bylaws. Uh, the bylaws. The bylaws, uh, yes. Yes, yeah, she announced and said how uh, she's got like 60% of who she, for her Senate seat, is in what she's in now. And most people get 19%. So it's a done deal. I'm just wondering who's going to run for assembly. She's, she said they're trying to find a woman. Oh. Should I run? <laughs> yes, <kidding>. why not? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I can barely keep up with this. <laughs> Freddie, I did not get an email from you today. You did not? Okay. That, this this is the, this the reason. Late, uh, after, late afternoon one, I meant. Okay, let me... For, it happened also to Jane as well, so don't worry, you're not the only one here. That means I have to I was figure worried. out what's going on. Uh, let me see. Uh, the email I have for you is the wncseat18 at gmail.com. Um, yes, I'm staring right at it. Okay, well, let me re forward again. Or right, just put FYI. Um, it's just basically the, the changes uh, made to conform with the two new ordinances. I'll be talking about it in more detail, even though my email is really detailed as to what I'll be speaking about, but that, that's kind of like my script. <laughs> um, Terry, so Shannon uh, noticed a couple of issues with the minutes. Okay. And- um, You'll correct them. Huh? You'll correct them tonight okay. or tomorrow. But there's, there's one thing in particular that is a concern. Okay. Um, the very last motion, we I, I recorded the meeting so that I could do the minutes. And on the very last motion, we technically didn't really vote on it, but we agreed that we were gonna meet. The last motion was about meeting on October 12th. And so in the minutes I said motion carried because there was like consensus about it. We all agreed to it, but so I don't really know, how should I really state that? You mean we didn't vote raising our hands? No, we did not. 
we just kind of all said yes. Yeah, we like there was that's a vote to me. That's voting. <laughs> okay, so then I could insert. Uh, no, you could say something about uh, all members uh, vote uh, that were affirmative. Agreed. That or, you could say I, consensus. We the motion consensus. carried by consensus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just add the by consensus part. Yeah, but I appreciate that Shannon actually went through and she caught. And then the other things were, um, I didn't include who seconded the motions. Um, I didn't know how important it was. I guess I was getting a little lazy or something. So, but I'll insert that in. Okay. Yeah, okay. because then we know who to blame. There are like <laughs> pages, you know, and I was like, it's like, of course, the one thing I decided to edit out uh, was important. So <laughs> I won't do that again. Uh, hey, Lisa. Yeah. That's our Lisa, right? Right. Yes. Okay. I'm That's her, her stage name is Waltz. The other, George is not us. So yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry about that, Jane. That's my uh, that's my stage alias. Name. Your stage I, I thought name. I had seen it before, but I um, yeah. So for the that's purposes, do you, we need to retitle you with your current last name? Your last name. Uh, for yeah, Morocco for the NC WNC. Lisa Waltz for professional. Morocco for WNC. If you don't mind, Waltz world to the rest of us. Hey, I got actually. I actually got a job, Terry. So there's something. You've right? got to be kidding. I know. Hey, don't sound like that bad. <laughs> no, I mean, it's really working, and they're shutting down sets already because people got the COVID. I know. But I know. It's, it's crazy. There's only, there's only four things in production right now, so you, it is like winning the lottery. I agree. It's a. It's a, a commercial or actual. It's a uh, television show called Shameless. I don't know if you watch oh, it. Oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen it every year. This is the last year. I'm so sad. Oh, well, then I've just made it in. Excellent. What? You're in Chicago. Oh, well. Uh, you're yeah, well, right. I'm in Pasadena, but I'm in Chicago. <laughs> Why is I going to Pasadena? Because that's where they shoot the elementary school uh, scenes, and I am the principal. Oh, okay. But the story's still over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the rich school. There's they something start. about like somebody named V and they have twins. Yes, that's and, a preschool. Okay, well, they're going to elementary school now, and <laughs> I am Mrs. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> v and her significant other. Well, I don't know. Did they ever get married? No, because he was married. Remember? We know the whole story, Mary and I. But they well, had uh, I saw that. <laughs> I'm going to have to catch up. I don't know anything about it. All you I know, know is that it is? here's the crazy thing, you guys, is that I, mean, I only have a few minutes, but here's the crazy thing. You know, Screen Actors Guild, there's a union. You get paid for doing X, Y, and Z. They pay you to take the COVID tests. So I've had two already, and I'm going to have a third. Now, if I was on location, it's $500 for every test I take. If I'm in town, it's 250. So, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> do they know, well, you do they know who your husband is that you could get it for free anytime? Yeah, <laughs> yes, and I passed, thankfully. Yes, I've passed the test so far. I'm fit for work. <laughs> it was okay. the nose one, right? Not the mouth. Yeah, uh, the nose, very high in the nose, yes. I uh, have to Tom, do that. Tom had two of those tests, uh, and it, it's free with our insurance, uh, the rapid one and then the, the big one. And he tested negative on both this Tuesday. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So do they keep you in a bubble? Well, they, you know, no, that's the problem. I mean, usually that's why guest stars are really like again, very rare because they like to keep their pods, right? Mm -hmm. So when they bring in guest stars like this, it's like I have my fitting today and it's it's unlike anything I've ever, it's like being, it's like, it's like a hazmat team coming at you, <laughs> you know? They're just <laughs> completely covered in PPE. I'm by myself in a room. I try everything on. They see me on a closed circuit camera. I, I don't know how it's going to be when we're actually on the set, but um, 
Uh, they yeah. asked me to not be with anybody until I'm finished shooting. So you have to. Did kind of you start tell him your husband is a doctor? <laughs> I, I, I did not mention that, but thankfully he's in Key West for a while, so I don't have to worry about that. So. Again, again, yeah. again. Uh, well, yes. Oh. Well, I have to have the test done on the November 30th. I am not looking forward to it to do a procedure. They won't let you do the procedure to yeah. have it 73 yes. hours ahead. Okay, perfect. I'm going to promote you to a panelist. Great. That, nice to that show everybody. is a little raunchy, you know. Is Shameless it? is a little raunchy. But oh, well, maybe, maybe they'll write Mrs. Sugar in to get a little raunchy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you meet. Do you see how the other cast is? Oh, I can't wait. A couple of episodes. It's on Showtime. Showtime. It's a very okay. interesting TV show. Is it? Okay, I can't wait. So, I Terry, like, I have a question. On the air date so you yes. can watch. Um, so this uh, city ordinance that we're going to be discussing tonight and that language that a stakeholder had recommended. Um, no. Don't we do our own language? You and Sean, I thought, came up with language. It was a stakeholder, but Sean, oh, okay. Sean concurred with it. So, and other people in the community also agreed. Um, so, what, what, how do I, what do we do? How do we do that? Well, when we get to it, it it's be, under Sean's out, uh, homeless stuff, right? Right. I put it on a document and I could email it to somebody if you want to put it on the screen or do I read it or what do we do? So how could we get it on the screen now? Just email it to Jane? That's what I'm wondering. What do you think, Jane? Uh, right now I'm trying to rename people, but uh, yeah, you can use- Poor and, Jane. Um, I lost my cell just a minute. No problem. I didn't know uh, also, uh, uh, Mary, uh, which ordinance you're talking about? Hello, the um, wait. I've got it on my screen here. The homeless ordinance that City Council is they tabled it. Uh, oh, I don't see the number here. It's on the agenda. It, on it's agenda. under homeless. It's number one, two, three, two, four, five under homeless. Okay, the city report, the R20. Here, wait, let me pull up the agenda. It's R20, yes. Okay. Um, the, the PDF that's five pages, that's in draft right now? I don't know if it was five pages. But About sitting, lying, and sleeping in public areas? Yes, that yes. one. I have that open. It's a good thing it's, it's just linked in the agenda. So if anyone has the agenda, or like if Jane, if you have the agenda, it's, it's, it's very hyperlinked and you click it, it'll open a window. Right. But if you want me to share, I could share it too. So I we're it. going to make our own, uh, uh, what do you call it, motion. It's not going to be this, what's listed here, I don't it's, think. So we would like to send a letter to Paul Koretz recommending that this language be added to the ordinance. Yes. And see if he can make a, an amendment. amendment to the motion, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's, okay. that's, a, that's a good idea. Okay, so I have the recommendation for the language can you email it to me and then i can um... yes okay so jane what's your email address it's first name last name at gmail jane was at gmail.com yep got it okay i'll send it right now oh okay barbara's just text me saying let me in i can see you you can't see me oh well, yeah Barbara. and she used the link that he sent then she would be in already, and Joanne's here too. Barbara, can you raise your hand? I, you I just guess? moved her in. Oh, perfect. If we have any other uh, council members, if you could I see them. Angel. Angel's with us. All right, but she's not a council member. So. No. She's a representative. Right. But yeah. No, no, just no. trying to get the council members in first, so we can name <laughs> I them know. and stuff. Sean. Sean, is that you? Yes, that's me. Okay. Thank you. Promoting right now.
That the council is angel. I have something someone sent me says news and updates. Oh no, that was from Westwood Gardens. Somehow they put down at seven o'clock tonight, not my problem, because the agenda says six. And if they sent the agenda, the people would know the right time. So and I don't speaking of. Yes. What? 602. Two. One, two, three, we four. Have, we have <laughs> okay. Well, I'm still renaming people. Okay, I'll wait. And, and taking attendance. So hold on a second. And... Okay, Jeff's going to be signing on very soon because he got that thing from Westwood Gardens that was wrong. Um, what's his name? Where is he? Sean, for some reason, uh, Westwood Gardens said it out that it's at six o'clock, uh, seven o'clock tonight, the meeting. Don't they send our regular agenda agenda? Well, because that's why Jeff's not on right now. He, he got that that said six, seven. When you're done eating, unmute, unmute, unmute. Unmuting, thank you. Okay. I didn't want to eat and chew in everybody's ear. Thank um, you. I literally just pass along exactly what I get from you. An agenda with the yes, date gotta, and everything. Okay. Exactly. As long okay. as we do it right. We have any council members? Oh, there's Kim. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Okay, so all these numbers on people I'm seeing now, Joanne, Kim, they're all already moved, right? So we can start. Yep. Hold on, I'm going to rename Kim score and check her in. And what happened to the participants? Do we have any other, anybody else in the participants who is a council member? Okay, when I hit participants, it's not showing because now I got that bar at the end. How can I get rid of the bar at the end of my thing? Ay, ay, ay. What's this saying? All you. And we have 14 council members. Here, okay. Barry. Okay, I'm just wondering why I, now I got, I can't, I click on participants myself because I want to make sure. There they are. Okay. So um, these are panelists and the rest are participants. Okay, okie dokie. Well, I'm going to start tonight's meeting of the West Side Neighbor Council. I'm calling it to order. And I um, want everybody to know that when we uh, talk tonight, everybody will have a turn once we get to the agenda item you want to talk on. And we will go to the participants first, and then we will come back to the, uh, the board. Well, you will raise your hand when the item you want to talk on is. Jane will see who raised their hand in what order and for that item and call on you. She will then tell you when you can unmute. Other than that, you will be unmute. You will be muted the whole meeting, and um, you will not be uh, your you will not have a video. You'll, we'll just hear your voice. And when we call on you, we need your name and your address. If we held this meeting like we used to do in the West Side Pavilion, everybody has a speaker card they must fill out. And that speaker card asks for the same information, your name and your address. We're not going to bother with your phone number, but we do need your name and address. And if we ask, you just spell your name, please spell it slowly because our secretary is uh, taking minutes. Okay, I am going to- like This me meeting is being recorded. I'm recording the meeting now, start now. Okay, would All you right? like me to tell the secretary who is here? Yes, well, we're gonna take roll and that's how we'll okay. do it, right? But uh, so I just wanna get that information out to everyone and we will have public comment. If you have a copy of our agenda, you'll see it's number three. And it tells you right there what public comment is. It's for something that is not mentioned on the agenda. And it tells you um, why we can't take action on whatever you're gonna talk about tonight. 
We cannot go back and forth. You will talk for uh, two minutes and we will thank you. And if we think we need to have you come back next month and put it on the agenda, we will do it. Except next month is January. We always take off for the month of December for in the past reasons because people were gone. <laughs> I don't know about this year, but we just take off the month of December. So our next meeting won't be until the second week of January. So with that said, I'm going to ask Jane to take role. I was told that Jay Wu would, would not be here. She was the only one. And seat 16 and 19 are vacant, so they're not here. But everybody else should be here. And I, I don't know if, oh, um, Zach down at the bottom of participants, he's, you'll call on him. He'll be, he's one of the, uh, he's um, Sheila Cruz representative, I believe. If he even has his last name, but I'm assuming that's who it is. And I, when uh, Jeff comes, you'll bring him over. All right, so then board members, uh, we'll do it by, how do you want to do it? Seat number first and then- Yeah, well, so here's, okay. I mean, I can tell you who is here, who I have checked in. Um, okay. If, if that's acceptable. Um, right. I show, uh, so if you don't hear your name or your number, then say something. I have seat two, seat three, seat four, seat five, seat six, seat, seat seven, seat, seat eight, seat nine, seat 10, seat 12, seat 13, seat 14, seat 15, seat 17, and seat 18. That's who I have here. Okay. Anybody sitting here whose seat was not called out? All right, then that's our role. So what's her number she's working with tonight? It'd be three from 16? Yeah. Okay, so you're working with 16, Mary. Okay, what about seat one? Uh, seat one, that's one's not here. One. Right. So we have 15, we have 15 participants, uh, 15 panelists. And we're missing the other Mary. So we're missing the other Mary. She's not here. Six, correct. Right. So oh. we do not have seat one, seat 11, uh, seat 16, or seat 19. Okay. So four from 19 is 15. Okay. So we're, we're working with 15 tonight for uh, your counting purposes. All right. With that, we'll get started now. Um, I'll turn it over to our secretary, Shannon Burns. Where did she go? Oh, there she is. Okay. Shannon. Treasurer. Secretary. Treasurer. I mean, treasurer. Treasurer. <laughs> the first thing is treasurer, right? All right. We have right. a monthly expenditure report, uh, reporting month, October 2020. I'm going to choke. <coughs> Pardon me. A little water? Yeah. Hold on a second. And we spent a grand total of $41.08 this month. And I do want to make a little comment that um, Lisa and Dunn went back and forth um, an inordinate number of times um, this past month over a seven cent entry. I'm telling you, we spent like... Uh, <laughs> It's going to be like two hours on this. And if you're charging out at my rates, uh, <laughs> should have donated it. Anyway, um, so it's, it was really just the uh, WNC phone and the, um, uh, the planning department uh, for copies of documents that we got on, on uh, Biblos uh, because we had to go way back in the history of things. So that's it. We have a net available of 16,644.47. And um, that's it. And I move to um, approve the MAR for um, October 2020. Lisa Morocco, C2, I second. Okay, so is there anybody on the board that wants to abstain from this vote? You'll have to get rid of this thing again because I can't see anybody. If you want to abstain, then um, raise your hand. Is there any no's? 
I'm surprised that Lisa didn't comment on the seven cents. Well, I'll t uh, can I just, well, let's get the vote done. But to be honest with you, everything froze on my end when you were talking about the seven cents. So I assumed you you surmised and let everybody know how ridiculous it was, but it all it worked out in the wash. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see nobody anymore but this. Uh, so shouldn't I be seeing somebody somewhere? Uh, Terry, you need yeah. to exit full screen. Go to the top right hand corner and where you have view options and you should be able to exit full screen. I oh, we're just, you know what, can I just quickly say something, uh, Terry? Sure. This is Lisa Maraca C2. I just want everyone to take a hard look at this monthly expenditure report. I know we sort of do this um, just by rote almost and everybody kind of goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But I want you to take a hard look at this. $16,000 is nothing to sneeze at and we aren't meeting in December. So I want everybody to really understand that we have $16,000, $17,000 left to use um, to, for this community uh, starting in the new year. So I want everybody to start thinking about that. Um, things that we normally do, this is pandemic times, things have changed, things that we normally do, we might not do. So let's just all literally think about how we can best use these funds in the new year. Okay, everybody come back with the suggestions next time. What? All right, Sam? and I just wanted to make a comment that I am going to put in this year for um, doing utility boxes, especially the one by the park. Okay. Yes. All right. We never voted yet. We yeah, we I, need to vote. I got started. I said, is anybody abstaining? And anybody saying no? So is uh, that means that we're 15 0 0. Thank you, uh, Mary, okay, got it. for this vote. All right. See, I got it right. It was secretary was number one. I just put the wrong person. So we're going back up to A to Mary. And he uh, did the minutes, she's handed them out. Uh, I assume we'll have October 12th minutes another day, or yes. did I get them and forget to send no, them? Okay. No, they're not done yet. Okay. Uh, Go so, ahead, Mary. A um, couple of corrections to the minutes noted by Shannon, which I appreciate. Um, I omitted the seconds. I will add those back in. And then on the um, third motion or final motion at the end of the evening, um, the motion carried by consensus. So I'll make those corrections. And are there any other corrections? <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, Shannon. Go on mute, Shannon. That was my husband, actually. Be on mute. <laughs> not talking. OK, if there are no other corrections, then I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Someone get off mute. Uh, and C-13, I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, any going to abstain? Anybody voting? I abstain. You know? I have to abstain, actually. Because you weren't here. Since I wasn't here last month. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll second the minutes, Sean, seat number nine. Okay. okay. So, um, and that was uh, Jane, who wasn't here last month, right? Yeah, 13. Right. So I'm okay. abstaining. Got it. And then are there any no's? All right, so it'll be 14 yeses. All right, let's go to general public comments. As I said, this if you want to make a comment, it can only be on something that is not on the agenda. You can talk for two minutes and uh, we will decide if we want to have a you on the agenda for January. Uh, or if it's just a comment you want to make, no, letting us know about something that's happening in the area or whatever. So, um, okay. So, there... the, our first speaker is Celeste Wolf. I've unmuted you, Celeste. Go ahead. And Hi. your name and your address, please, to start, okay. and then I'll time you. Celeste Wolf, 10269 Orton Avenue. Um, I'd like the WNC to put on the agenda. The striping change for Beverly Glen between Olympic and Pico uh, to be presented for stakeholders to hear about impacts and to weigh in with the city about direct effects this change could bring. It looks like the city is proposing taking away one of the northbound lanes on Beverly Glen Boulevard between Pico and Olympic for a center turn protected lane. Um, what this does is it impacts um, Keswick, Ilona, Tennessee, and Almayo as the one egress onto Beverly Grant Glen. So choking it down to one lane with a protected left turn lane um, actually may not be workable for us. I would prefer that the, I guess the protected lane actually go onto the east side of the street 
or the west side of the street. Um, but either way, I actually don't want it to happen at all because I think um, the traffic flows have always been important um, to commuters in this area to, 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 to prevent choke points so people could get in and out quickly and easily. Um, I know that this was presented as a safety issue for a particular stakeholder, um, but I think what it does is it, it will end up causing backups on Pico uh, all the way to Fox Studios, who only has one egress out into Pico, and they use this particular uh, avenue um, to get onto Olympic. What would it what it would do is if you choke it, it will cause um, people to want to have to actually use Kerwood as a second egress point. At that point, I would say you then put in a traffic light so there's a protected left. That might satisfy the people in uh, above Olympic wanting to down down uh, number of the traffic amount of traffic going up there for speeding. Ten seconds. Um, okay. So anyway, I just wanted that put on the agenda so that we could uh, have it presented and so we could discuss it with the the city. Okay. Uh, and I think I don't time. know. Time. That's time. Okay. Who's next? Okay, one second. Um, next, we have Lisa Redman. Lisa, please start with your name and your address, and then I'll yeah. start your timer. Um, my name is Lisa Redman, and what you already knew, but I don't want to give an address because I don't think that you can enforce that. Um, okay. what Lisa, you know is I am a stakeholder in the neighborhood, Stop her. work in the neighborhood. Stop her. I am calling because. Go ahead. I stopped um, her. So okay, what Lisa, is you say? if you go down to City Hall, this is a city. We are under the city umbrella. We are governed by the Brown Act. When you fill in the speaker card, it those are the information you put on it. If we were in our live in person meeting, you would be putting it on the speaker card. And since we're not there, this is our only way of getting it unless I have people fill in a speaker card the week before. Um, all right, it's fine. Uh, we'll see, we'll just go ahead and go. If you don't wanna give your address, can you, uh, or give your block, the hundred block or anything like that, I'm not gonna force you. Go ahead, Jane. No, I, it oh. made me upset even further because I never have to give an address when I call into the LA City Council office. I think you're wrong on that as a Brown Act that I have to give an address. Well, if you're calling into the LA City Council office, that's not going into a meeting, a city um, meeting that like- That is a city council committee. meeting. But okay. anyway, and you're also talking back at me, which is I think also kind of wrong with the Brown Act as well. But I'm calling to address the homelessness issue. And I really want to encourage this neighborhood council to address that and to work together to find solutions, like to ask for housing, to maybe look at losing a hole or two of the golf course in Rancho Park, to open that up for safe camping. This homelessness issue is not going away anytime soon, and it's going to get worse as the pandemic is getting worse and the economy is getting worse. We're going to lose a whole lot of uh, affordable housing and rentals. We're going to have a whole lot more people on the street. I think we it's it's a burden for everybody, not housed people and unhoused people. And we're people in our community. We have to come together and find solutions, not find ways to make them go away. So please encourage as a community that we can come together and do this. Thank you. Okay, we do have a homeless committee and we do have a homeless on the agenda. So um, when we get to that, uh, maybe there'll be some questions answered for you or see how we're doing, but you're more than welcome to join our homeless committee. But because we have homeless committee on the agenda where it's bringing up those points um, in the future, that would be the time for you to make your comments. But we accept those comments and we're, we're happy for you to join the homeless committee. We're always looking for people who would like to be on the homeless committee. All right, next. Uh, next, we have Olga Lexel. Olga, please start with your name and your address. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. 
So first of all, I'm, I'm an employee of a business on Pico Boulevard. Second of all, it is a violation of the Brown Act to ask folks to provide their address to a public record like this. Third, I'm calling as a stakeholder to let you know that uh, I just wanted to see if you were aware that our area, this whole part of the West Side, has actually committed to the least amount of affordable housing uh, in the city's construction plans for affordable housing. Um, areas like MacArthur Park and K-Town are at the top of the list. They've done, some areas have done 400% of the amount of housing they promised to take on. Our area has done actually almost zero. And uh, I'm just curious why you're going to discuss criminalizing homelessness on your agenda, considering that we uh, don't have any affordable housing in our area. Thank you. Well, when we get to it, you'll understand because we're not, it's on the agenda does not mean we're supporting it or we might Hi, be- Hi, Terry, you actually it. can't respond to public comment. That's a violation okay. of the Brown Act. Well, I'm telling you it's on the agenda. That's and also a violation of the Brown Act. If okay. it's on the agenda? You can't respond to public comment no matter what. Why am I not, you need to not, uh, you need to not unmute yourself, please. Your time has expired. The next person we have is Sarah Barumi Sadria. I'm sorry if I messed that up. There you go. Sarah, please start with your name and, and yes, and your address, please. My name is Sarah, S A R A Barumi, B O R O O M I. I'm at uh, 10389 Tennessee Avenue. And I'm wondering, is um, Angel on this call today? Uh, yes, Angel will be speaking in a few moments. Okay, is she listening in? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Because um, I'm calling regarding the, the lane change and actually the takeaway on Beverly Glen. And I live on Tennessee and Beverly Glen. And it has one of the biggest street openings on, um, in, on all of Beverly Glen, actually. And this is Tennessee um, East. So when I think about taking the traffic from two lane to one lane, the first thing that comes to my mind is this big opening that presents itself and makes it so much easier for uh, cars, uh, commuters to cut through the neighborhood to get to wherever they, they're going. Um, also, Pico is a big traffic jam and people will try to avoid staying on that and even Beverly Glen at all costs. So um, I would like, uh, for Angel to consider getting some input from the people who live on these streets uh, where this change is going to happen, especially the ones that live closest to Beverly Glen, and maybe find out a better way of solving this issue. Um, so I, I, I would really hope that someone reaches out to the residents and sets up a meeting um, so that we can discuss what the issues really are on Beverly Glen. Um, and we really do need to perhaps put a hold or a freeze on this until we have some more input from the residents, please. Um, and that's about it. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. As I said, we will put it on the January agenda. And <laughs> I will read this one more time for um, when it says general comments. It's on matters not appearing on the agenda. So we do have a whole area for the homeless and that would have been the appropriate time to bring up comments as well. So uh, in the future, please, if you see that we do have on the agenda and we bring it on every month because it is a big issue, is the homeless. And um, that's when we would prefer you, especially when you call out one of the uh, number five under that issue. All right, one more comment. Yes, I see. one more, Jenny Burdett. Jenny, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, can you start yes. with your name and your address, please? Well, yeah, we're not Jenny. gonna do address anymore because uh, if that, <laughs> uh, that old whatever, Miss was it Redmond or well, Lexus? How are, you, how are you a stakeholder then? How about that? Hi, I'm Jenny Burdett. I'm on Motor Avenue, close to the park. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank this whole council. Again, I've become more involved in this and I'd really like to thank Angel for everything she's done with all of our issues that we've had here and for her to th pass that on to Councilman and Chorus. I'd like to thank Celeste for everything she's doing to 
help find locations and Irene. And there's so many neighbors I'd like to thank, but I, I would just like to thank everyone for coming together and getting things done. And I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Well, thank you. We appreciate you too for coming and starting to be more a part of the WNC. All right, with that, we're going to move on. Now, is there any more comments? Any more that is something that is not on the agenda? All right. So now we're going to go to, uh, I don't see any LAPD. I kept calling and um, no one had responded. So I don't know why we have no one. Maybe because uh, of the, the uh, cycles they've been on that no one was working tonight. So we'll go switch over to Angel, then we'll go to Zach, because I see Angel and Zach both are here tonight. Yep, They're both, I promoted both to panelists so they can unmute themselves at will. Oh, well. Angel, why does ahead. one say participant under participant? That's a different, that's a different, I don't know Ooh. who that is. Okay, well, okay. All right, let's go with Angel. Hi, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can see me. Yes, um, I apologize if I have mustard on my face. I just had dinner. Um, with that said, uh, a couple updates for today. I know this has been touched on a bit. Some people already know, but some don't. So I just want to make sure to update everyone on this call. And I think Sean will probably talk about this a bit on his um, update with the Homeless Committee as well. Um, but Council Member Kretz did meet with Judge Carter uh, last week in regards to the LA Alliance lawsuit. Um, just as a reminder for those of you who don't know as well, um, essentially the city was sued um, by a diverse group of stakeholders uh, that essentially said that the city wasn't, you know, doing what they should for the unhoused community. And so with that, um, there have been some agreements that have been put forth um, and some orders that the, the judge has given us. And um, essentially each council district has to find housing for a, uh, a, a significant portion of the unhoused folks in each of their districts. Um, they're doing a district by district approach. So each council uh, district is responsible for that uh, allocation of folks within their, within their uh, borders and um, this is post tricky for us in CD5 because a lot of our um, our space is already developed. So it's been a little bit more tricky than it has been for other council districts, but you know, we're working through it. Um, with that, as a lot of you know, um, there was consideration of potentially using way back in the back of Rancho Park near the archery area for about 25 or so tiny homes. Um, there was also the consideration of potentially using uh, um, a portion of Westwood Park. Um, Ruckin Parks really wasn't keen on it. Um, there's a lot of other issues. I know a lot of people kind of have their ear to the ground with just, you know, general trash issues and, you know, you know, uh, crime that has perceived to have gone up since, you know, COVID started and since, you know, we had the trailers there and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of the community reached out to our office. There was a big coalition of folks who, while they're very empathetic to the homeless community, just felt that the park was not the best place for it. Um, so with that, Councilmember Kretz met with the judge last week, and he did indicate that he was taking the um, the parks off of our list of potential locations. So the parks will not be used for housing for um, for our unhoused neighbors. Um, so just want to give you an update on that. Also, in regards to <clears throat> the trailers at Rancho Park that were there under the mayor's program for um, helping get folks off the off the street during COVID, um, that is shut down now at Rancho Park. So all the trailers are empty. All the trailers are gone. The parking lot itself is not open yet. Um, from what I understand, they're working on it. I know they were taking down the fence recently. And at this point, I, I believe that the gate is locked, but I think they just have some more sanitation and stuff to do things like that. And then hopefully it'll be open to the public soon. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on too, just in regards to that LA Alliance lawsuit. So at this point in time, um, essentially part of the binding agreement that is going on right now is that they are focusing on people who are under freeways or near freeways within 500 feet. Um, there's some vagueness um, to the in and outs of what exactly is going to be required. So the question remains of if someone, if we find housing for people who are currently there, then what if someone else shows up or what if they decline the bed or so on and so forth? So council actually um, uh, heard a motion last week um, that potentially would make it, for lack of a better word, illegal or banning um, folks from sleeping under freeways or within 500 feet. And then also part of that motion um, 
was to potentially, you know, make it essentially illegal for folks to sleep near bridge housing. The reason for part of that is because when Mayor Garcetti was, you know, setting up the bridge housing program, so on and so forth, one of his promises was that he, if, you know, communities agreed to have these bridge housing um, facilities in their neighborhoods that they wouldn't then start seeing folks, you know, sleeping outside in and around these areas. So um, that's a motion that was hotly contested for a lot of different reasons. Um, lots of arguments on both sides. One of the concerns is that, you know, it could open up the city for more lawsuits. It could significantly limit the places in the city where these folks actually have to sleep. And the fact that while there's health reasons um, why people shouldn't be sleeping near, where exhaust is coming out in your freeways, there's also the idea that that's one of the only places where they can get shelter from the elements. So it's going to be discussed again on November 24th. Um, so if anyone wants to tune into city council that day, um, that'll be discussed then. And uh, next thing I wanna talk about, uh, I wanna thank again, Westside Neighborhood Council, your board and your lovely committee um, for all the work that you did with the plan update for the West LA plan update. Obviously I know we had several meetings. I think we all sat in several hours together through those. Just wanna thank you again for your work on that. Um, I got an update from planning. They received over a thousand emails and phone calls. So they've got a ton of feedback from the community. I know the letter that was sent by Westside Neighborhood Council was extremely thorough. Um, so next steps in that is basically going to be the environmental impact reporting, and that's going to be early 2021. And there will be opportunities for community um, feedback at that stage as well. Um, got some kind of good news for you. So this is a whole another subject moving on. Um, and I'm trying to be quick because I know you got to get a hefty agenda and all that jazz. So um, Department of Cultural Affairs essentially um, when developments go in, they have to set aside, I think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, 1%. Um, and they have to set aside that money for um, like cultural things for the neighborhood. They can either, you know, put in something cultural in their lot or whatever. Either way, the moral of the story is that we have $10,000 that can be used for the West Side um, Neighborhood Council community area. And we may even have more than that. So, um, we have to allocate out those funds. So we're going to be doing that within the next couple of weeks. And then that money should be available for use next year and can be used for things like um, potentially upgrading um, beautification and so on and so forth, maybe on Pico, streetscape stuff, so on and so forth. Um, I want to say hello to our commenters for general public comment. I have spoken with a few of you um, at length and just want to say hello and please keep keep com communication open. You know, you can email me at any time you have questions. Um, I'm happy to hear that West Side Neighborhood Council is going to be putting the lane change on next month's agenda. Also, um, Jay Greenstein, who is our chief transportation deputy, I spoke with him about this today and he's happy to speak with anyone personally. So if you want, just send me an email and then I'll copy he, him in. And then he's happy to speak with whomever I believe Celeste, uh, excuse me, Celeste is going to be speaking with him next week. And that's um, where I'll stop for now for updates. And unfortunately, uh, this month, you know, I normally stay to the end, um, but I, I can't stay to the end today. So if, ever, if anyone has any questions right now, I'm happy to answer them. Or, you know, you can reach me by email at any time. Um, and that's angel.izzard at lacity.org. Angel is the traditional spelling. And then dot I-Z, as in zebra, A-R-D, at lacity.org. So I'll end there. Um, Terry Barbara has her hand up. Okay, because I know Angel's on the timetable and has to leave. So Barbara, what is it quickly? Where does she? I just, uh, I'm here. I just wanted to note, uh, Angel, thank you for your participation in the planning process. Um, as you know, the um, Neighborhood Council passed a motion and we're going to do a longer motion tonight related to the process that follows now with the West LA Community Plan because we have talked with Daniel and have also expressed our feelings to the planning department that they need to do one additional step before starting the environmental process. And they need to come back to the community with the draft plan and not start an EIR on a project we haven't seen. So, and also hopefully by then they'll have numbers and better assessment of current housing units, projected housing unit needs and those kinds of things. So at any rate, I just want to make it clear that the EIR process, the NLP process should not start until we see the draft plan and have a chance to comment. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you for that information, Barbara. And makes sense to me. <laughs> okay, well, have a good evening, Angel. Right. Thank you for have coming in to us for a while. All right. So now we're going to go to Zach. Okay, Zach, you are you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Okay, I'm here. Um, I assume you can hear me. I assume you can see me. Um, you can see the uh, sharks behind me. That's from Sharknado. You'll have to forgive me. The movie was filmed partially in Santa Monica. And I feel like in these times, we need a little bit of levity now and again. Um, so I have uh, sort of a more detailed update that I'm going to be emailing into Jane. But um, sort of two things I wanna to touch on. The first one is the passage of Measure J. Um, normally I would not be talking about ballot measures that have passed, but this one we're really excited for. Uh, Measure J mm -hmm. uh, basically says that 10% of what's referred to as net county cost, or it's basically unrestricted county funds, will automatically be going to specific services um, within LA County, and so these kind of services um, uh, are locally generated funds for housing, diversion, youth and mental health services. And so our initial estimates show that this will be somewhere between 360 million and 490 million an annually. Um, it's gonna be phased in over the next three years, but we're really, really excited about this a new funding stream that's going to be coming in and the effects that it's going to be able to have for our ability to house people, to provide mental health services, um, to provide diversion services, and also to provide empowerment and enrichment services for our disadvantaged and youth that don't always have the same access that everyone does. We're really, really excited about this. We had a motion just this last week that established a commission that will be in charge of directing where these funds go to specifically. And so this is just a really exciting moment for the county to make this kind of real concrete financial commitment towards seeing these things happen in the future. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing, I don't know if people have heard, uh, but we had an election just <laughs> recently. Um, we're really excited about that. Um, I know that the previous election in March was, a, there were a few hiccups, it was a little difficult. And this one, we're really excited for the fact that it went really, really smoothly. Um, we didn't hear any sort of major concerns. Um, we saw, you know, we saw, I think currently we're at somewhere around 60 to 66% um, uh, uh, of people who are registered to vote voted, um, which is an increase in previous years. And we're thrilled about that. We want to see that number go as high as possible. Um, and so it's nothing definite yet, but just a little sneak preview is we're thinking that we really want to see this happen for our future elections of really focusing on the mail-in ballot. We saw our drop boxes be hugely successful. A massive number of people took advantage of those drop boxes. And I'm sure a few people on here may have been watching MSNBC and you may have heard about how uh, in Texas they were seeing they had one drop box per county down from 12. We had over 400, um, you know, and LA County is literally twice the size of Harris County. So we're excited about that. We're excited about how successful that was. I believe we have counted all the mail-in ballots and day of ballots. Um, we still have our provisional ballots to go through. And so the provisional ballots are people who were not registered to vote before the deadline. And so um, they had to do just a little bit of extra work. So we're just verifying that their eligibility to vote and then those both will be counted as well. Uh, and anybody whose signature did not match because it changed for whatever reason, we're making sure that there is time for people to cure those ballots as well. And that will happen. Um, we have 30 days to uh, certify our election. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that before the full 30 days. but. That process will continue. Um, and finally, just sort of on the topic, I, I know it's November. I know it feels like March for all of us, but it is in fact November. Uh, and so this is the time of Thanksgiving and Turkey, which is delicious. Uh, but I wanna remind people that we're still in the midst of a pandemic. We're still seeing, right now we're seeing our numbers go up in some really, really scary ways. Um, and so it's really important right now, even though we really, really want to, and I feel that so much, it's really important that we do not gather in large groups right now from multiple households. It's really not safe to do so. Um, I wanna remind everyone, we have a lot of testing capacity available. We can test roughly 200,000 people per week across the county. Only about 100,000 or so are getting tested. Okay, so we have 100,000 tests 
available free of charge. You can also take tests at your doctor's office and reach out to your doctor directly. But the county side has 100,000 tests available. So please, if you've been exposed at all or you have that slight cough, please go ahead and get tested. We have that available right now. Um, and, and just remember that I know we all wanna see each other. You know, I haven't seen the supervisor since the beginning of the pandemic. You know, since March, I have not seen my boss except for on Zoom. You know, we are taking this very, very seriously and we need everyone to band together, to work together so that we take this seriously, so that we do those things. Um, I will also share, I'm not seeing my mom this Thanksgiving. We're gonna be Zooming. She's over at Ocean Park in Bundy. She is not far <laughs> away, um, but we're gonna be Zooming. Um, I'm gonna drop off some turkey for her because I love making a turkey and I make the best damn turkey you've ever had, but I'm not even gonna be seeing my own mother. So, you know, everyone, please remember that, stay safe. Um, we're gonna have many opportunities to celebrate in the future, but right now it's better that we do it via Zoom virtually and preferably with a background that has flying sharks. And that's it for the county. <laughs> Okay, Joseph, you had a question or? Yes, Zach, can you address the current um, affair or issue with the sheriff, please? <laughs> um, depend in what way do you mean that question? I will say that just in general, well, let me just say in general, um, we've had a number of concerns with uh, the currently elected sheriff um, in regards to transparency issues, um, just responsiveness to a subpoena. I mean, if someone is subpoenaed legally, they need to appear and that has been ignored in the past. Um, in terms of just general transparency, uh, difficulty just in staying within their budget. Um, we had to take an unprecedented move of literally restricting over a hundred million dollars of their budget because they were simply refusing to work within it. Um, you know, it's important to remember. Yeah. I, I meant next steps. Next steps. Um, well, that I am waiting on as well. Uh, the sheriff is elected. That's true throughout all of LA County. We had a motion recently at the board meeting to simply examine the possibility of removing the sheriffs and what, what things we could and could not do. Um, I, you know, we're going to be waiting back on that report and to see what it actually says. Um, you know, some things that we were looking at, for example, was uh, because the sheriffs provide the municipal public safety or police force for the unincorporated parts of LA County, looking at whether or not we need to establish our own police force um, so that we can have that kind of accountability. Uh, LAPD, for instance, serves at the pleasure of the city council. Almost right. every municipality, right. their police source works, you know, serves at the pleasure of their city council. The sheriffs don't. Um, it, it, it's, you know, really creates that barrier there. Um, and with this current one, we do have that issue. So our hope um, when we see that motion come back at the beginning of the year with the new board, with uh, new uh, supervisor, uh, Holly Mitchell, that we'll be able to, um, you know, be able to look at that in a comprehensive way and, you know, look at it, building a better relationship with our public safety officers so that they can reside, serve, provide the service that they need to be able to provide transparently. And thank you. Okay, thank you for answering that question. Yeah. All right, let's go um, move on. And Mary, I was going to text you, but um, Mary Kuznick has joined us, so add her to your list. All right, next we have no more reports from them. My report is Barbara, you never sent me the job description for the Environmental Sustainability Committee. So I can't have someone do it if they don't know what they're doing. You have to unmute, Barbara. Okay, I, I, I have, I've gone through a number of websites of different neighborhood councils to look at their different environment committees. And I thought that what we really need to do is decide what our basic focus is because some of them focus on sustainability, some on environment, some on advocacy, some on trees, some on energy, uh, conservation. One of them even focuses on electric vehicle promotion. So I, I would, and then wildlife habitat, open space. 
Um, I would like to have a little direction from the board on what I should be focusing on. Um, well, I think I'm, originally, I can... originally we thought uh, to do this because uh, of um, uh, the, and that we're also the trees, someone could keep track when things are going to be cut down or whatever, and also because of uh, the service we're now being given to clean the tree wells. And, but we need someone to coordinate with those people to when to come out and do it. Uh, so it wasn't like we were gonna do um, uh, the, the electric cars and all that. I think it was more for local for, especially since we're starting our Peak Pico beautification or whatever we call it now, Lisa. Pico. Yeah, Walk Pico. Um, this would be someone to also coordinate once it's in to keep it uh, fresh and and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it was more for our local. You want to say something, Lise? Yeah, if it's okay, Terry, I had some Morocco business seat too. Um, and also, Barbara, you know, look, we've, there's always been a sort of, um, oh, I didn't know kind of factor about, especially when it comes to businesses and the trees that are in the parkways in front of those businesses. I mean, we all know that there's that Sunday trimmer that goes out there and there's no permit and all of that. And then when you go and actually talk to the businesses, they say, oh, we didn't realize we thought we could do that, blah, blah. So it's not even like all what Terry had just described, you know, the idea of, um, of you know, uh, if there's some sort of tree that's going to be taken down, the notification of that, but also the idea of what are your rights or what are you allowed and not allowed to do with the trees that are in front of your business or your residence. I mean, a lot of people just don't know the ABCs of that. And then, and as we move into a walk Pico streetscape that will start on the ground improvements in March, um, that will be a great liaison. That team will be a great liaison to work with that as we plant new trees, as we start a watering cycle, as we try to maintain the, wee, the, the tree wells and all of that. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think that we should say no to all the other lofty goals that an envi uh, sustainability uh, an environmental committee could do. But I think our focus right now, in my opinion, would be trees. I'd be curious to see if the board has anything else to say about it, but there's just been nobody minding the store on that one. I know Barbara, you run out when, when, you know, trimmers are out there. I've been out there. I've been out there. Trees. Terry's been out there, but it'd be great if there was a go-to team that could sort of be in charge of this. It'd be great. And, and remember that the chair has to be someone on the board, but the committee members could be anybody that has an interest in that. So it wouldn't be like whoever took the sign, it's only them. I'm sure there's a lot of people in the community who this is would be something they'd be very interested in being part of. It's not something that's going to be every week they have to do something. It'll be as needed. And um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that care about the landscape and the trees and keeping uh, Pico's, the, the tree wells neat. And if we branch out to other things as well. So we just need someone on the board that will say they'll chair it and then find we can all find names to throw in there, uh, people who would be interested in this kind of activity. Anybody else have a comment on the board? Yeah, Terry, Sean has his hand up. Okay, Sean. Thank you. I wanted to actually second that, Terry, you said it very well and it was exactly what I was thinking, which is uh, when we take on the trees, it's, it's, um, it's one bite of the elephant. The, the, big, the big picture is a giant elephant, but at least we can focus in on that and that is something where you found a lot of impassioned people. And we know that trees add character besides just the general relief in the, in the scape. It is also uh, health inducing, uh, whether it be shade or just general agricultural, environmental, uh, positive uh, contributions. So uh, I, I second that idea. Uh, I do want to suggest that we may want to consider something as well, perhaps task force oriented towards uh, cleanup. Yeah, just because I see so much uh, trash and waste uh, in public spaces that it would be awful. It would be pretty wonderful to see that uh, the stakeholders would consider participating in a regular trash cleanup when we know that sanitation may or may not be able to get the job done. Thank you. That's a great idea. Like a once a month, let's we're cleaning this portion of Pico. There, we're cleaning this portion of Westwood stuff. And there's a lot of kids out there. Eventually, they'll be back in school. 
that need those community service hours. So that, that's a nice group that can also help with that kind of thing, picking up trash and all that. So it's a great idea. But in the meantime, if anybody would like to cheer this, you know, get, email me and we'll put it on for January. But it'd be really nice to have this in, up and running before March when we start with the, uh, the Walk Pico and we start to see that the, the one whatever million dollar how many grant? How much millions, Lisa? It's uh, Lisa Morocco C2. It's a $1.8 million grant from the MTA. Yes. Yeah. So uh, start working for us. So we'd like to see people. And as I said, we found a service that will actually come out and clean right. The, right. The, the wells for free. Right. Can it's I also just jump in here? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm meeting with that, that group um, this Monday. We're going to walk okay, Pico, right. we're going to walk Westwood, and we're going to discuss, you know, the targeted areas that we'd like them to start with. So all the pieces are falling into place. It's just really lovely that we have this committee, this, I mean, this group that it will be able to do the cleaning, like uh, Sean says, that's a huge element of it. But uh, to form a committee, and like Terry said, there's so many people who are passionate about our trees out there. Um, we planted them, plant Pico, for God's sake. So uh, I just think this committee should be wildly popular, I think. <laughs> well, let's hope. Just got to get a leader. All right. So then uh, we, Barbara just said her internet came back. Did you have anything else you want to say, Barbara? Or can I move on? Is she here? Do you see her? Jane? You're muted. I know I'm muted. That's because my husband's making noises in the background. Um, she wound up in, in the participants on moving her back into a panelist. Okay. Um, and we do have a participant with their hand up. I don't know if this is the time for that or, or not. We'll do it. And uh, let's take one. And it's only one. And okay. after this, we'll move on. I think, I think I'm back. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Wonders never cease. Uh, I, I will catch up on the conversation that I missed. But I think this will be a wonderful way to recruit perhaps some younger members to our yeah. group. That's and, what we're saying. And, and what I'll do is I will summarize some of the better language from the different uh, councils, focusing on preservation of trees, planting of trees, tending of trees, but also something more because I think that will broaden who we attract and the ability to build a larger group. All right, so if you could get it to me soon, then I could send yes. it out to the board. Then by January, we can start because we want, we said we wanted to try and have it up and running before March when we'll yes. start to see some work on Pico. Well, I'll send a draft, I'll send a draft to you and it can go out to folks. And since they don't have a meeting in December, they can do their <laughs> homework on this. Yes, they can. Okay, uh, and Jane, and back our, to you. Our participant is Sarah Barumi. I'm sorry I messed, your, messed up your name again, Sarah. Go ahead. Can, she spoke to us earlier in public. Yes. Comment. Sarah, you had Sarah. a question? Maybe she never put her hand down. No, I, I took the hand down. And she's unmuted, but we're not able to hear you, Sarah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. now we can hear you. OK, so if you have headsets in your laptop uh, and you try to talk, it might not work. <laughs> um, so now I took that off. Now you can hear me. Question for you. Uh, I'm, I, I'm very interested in keeping Pico clean and walkable. And I'm wondering if any of the money that we have to spend on beautification could be spent on trash cans where we can separate plastic, glass, and regular trash. And I say that for various reasons, because some people do like to go through the trash mm -hmm. and get those bottles and, and, and glass, and they don't uh, you know, pick up what they sometimes put on the floor. And me personally, I keep all my glass and, and anything that they can get, uh, you know, someone can cash in, and I never put it in my recycle bin, I put it in a plastic bag beside my right. recycle bin, and they, and they thank me. They, you know, it, it's a lot. It's great help for them, and they shouldn't be going through the trash anyway. So, can we spend money on putting more trash bins slash recycling, you know, bins um, on along Pico? Well, uh, I, you know, it's we are we have talked about this for twenty. <laughs> well, before there was even a WNC when it was HOAs. 
the city will only put so many trash cans out because they don't have the money to empty the trash cans. That's why you don't only see so trash cans maybe by bus stops because I'm not sure if the the bus shelter people empty that. Do you know, Lisa? Does they do? Yeah. So the bus shelter people empty the ones near the bus stops and shelters, but the ones you see on the street, which you really don't see anymore, is because this, we used to have them. I've lived in my house for 47 years. So I remember when there were trash cans on Pico, but they took them away because they said they do not, the city back then, it's even worse now, uh, did not have the money to empty them and put the new plastic. And that's the reason why you don't see the trash cans. I know on exposition, um, before it was the exposition right away, when uh, before the train came, homeowners put their own black trash can over there and, and then would push it back across the street to their side for trash day, just so that they didn't have trash all over the expo um, right away. So that's how we've been doing it. But yes, it's a wonderful idea. And we will have some with our plant, plant uh, walk Pico. There will be some then, but certainly not. I doubt very seriously if it's going to be trash recycle and that, right, Lisa? I'm pretty right. sure Hi, it's, it's Lisa trash. Morocco, uh, business team too, Sarah. I, I, it's a great question. It's something that, like Terry says, we've fought. The great fight, like there was a, a big fight over a Westwood Pico trash can right in front of the Guitar Center that we finally got, and that took a year, believe it or not. Um, I mean, these are the things that will come along with the MTA call for project grant, uh, the $1.8 million grant. We've been very patient. It's been almost 10 years. Implementation starts next March, and we all have to be patient because that will roll out over the next year or two. That's not going to happen in a day or two. Um, so that's going to be an improvement for us. Um, but there's, you know, there's other things that we can have always talked about. Business improvement districts can have um, their own trash cans as well. It's just, mm -hmm. as Terry said, it's not about the can. It's about the maintenance of the can. And it's really even not about a tree. It's about the watering of the tree. So and that's where the money comes in and that's where the problems come in. But it's something that this, uh, this board I know has been very concerned about. I know personally, I've been very concerned about it as well. It's something that we are definitely working on. Okay, now we'll move on to the, still me, next thing, um, the selection election. Last month, we voted to ask the city clerk office to pay, <laughs> pay for our mail-in ballots because we have a selection. Selection is a town hall meeting, or is our bylaws call out town hall meeting where people just raise their hand who they're voting for and you say we cannot do that. So we asked the Dunn was kind enough to go ask the city clerk to do it. And Lisa and I had two conversations with them yet last week with Dunn. And one was where they said that uh, Dunn had, um, city clerk had said, uh, no, they don't do selection. So then the idea came up, well, maybe for this one only, we say, we do a motion tonight, uh, saying we will do a election, not a selection um, this year only. And we met with them again Friday and city clerk declined that because they, they didn't give me a reason other than city clerk says they do selection, they don't do selection, but my thought and I'm not an attorney, but my thought is that just having us make a motion tonight and raising our hand saying we want to change it is not how you can do it because it's our bylaws and you can't change your bylaws by just making a motion. You have, you know, it's a whole process with done. We have to announce that we're going to make an amendment, then we have to present the next month the amendment. And that's after the um, bylaws committee gets together and works out what we're going to even do. It's a long process. When we just changed our bylaws, uh, it took a year last time to get them finally where they were final last February. So I'm pretty sure the reason city clerk's staying away from it is because 
legally, I don't think making a motion to change your bylaws without going through the proper channels. I could be wrong, Freddie, but I think that's probably why they said no. But nevertheless, they said no. So now we are going to meet with Dunn again to decide um, what we're going to do moving forward. Are we going to wait till we can hold a town hall? And I'm not talking in a building. Uh, as Jane uh, has suggested uh, when we were doing emails um, about how can we hold a town hall in this kind of environment, um, that one of the suggestions was to have it at a park when the weather's nice and everybody brings a chair and sits six feet apart. If we get to that, by summer, but right now, since the numbers are all going up again, who knows when we'll even be at that point where they would even allow us to do that. So uh, I think until the city, until whoever decides we can actually do even six feet apart outdoors to hold a town hall, um, I think right now we're in limbo for this. And originally, as you know, we changed our bylaws and they agreed that we can hold our election selection every four years. And we thought that was from our last thing two years ago, the last election, but John had said, no, it's going to be two years from this, from 21, uh, four years from 21. So then we said, well, given it's a pandemic and everything that's going on, maybe we just can push it to, to next year or November or something. Um, but we don't know, nobody knows anything right now. Um, and as I said, if the, we were having hope that maybe June or sometime during the summer, we could do it. But my hope has diminished <laughs> in the last week. <laughs> I don't think other people, now if the um, vaccine comes out and everybody gets vaccinated by summer, yes, we can. But then we have to work backwards to, for four months to make sure everybody gets notified, the candidates are, uh, know that when they can file, that we have the form, and then we hold the meeting. And we're talking, you know, it's a four month process. So whenever we have the go ahead, that's when we could start planning to have it four months later. So right now we're in a holding pattern unless some miracle uh, occurs, but um, the city clerk definitely will not take us on so that, and to do mail-in ballots. Uh, Freddie, do you want to throw anything in? Uh, sure, yes. Um, so, uh, you, you are right in saying that uh, a mere motion would not be able to. Um, also, since the window, uh, there's a moratorium on bylaw amendments um, other than what, what our department is required to do, which is the implementation of new policy. Um, and I, I've been receiving some questions about the, the bylaws um, and there being uh, people wanting to make some changes, that's great. Um, that Our department will be providing uh, notices to all neighborhood councils when the bylaws can be opened up again for changes and amendments to, to improve upon it. Um, but uh, the, the email I sent to the whole board is our department's uh, required implementation of the community interest stakeholder ordinance and the uniform age ordinance um, as outlined um, that's been going back since 2018. Um, I said in my email I sent out two days ago, I want to make sure that you guys are receiving the emails I do send out. Um, if the email I'm talking about uh, is something that uh, uh, you might not have received as a board member, uh, please uh, um, let me know. Um, I do want to make sure that all board members are receiving uh, the notices from our department, um, as well as any of the newsletters our department do send. Um, but when it comes to the selection process, so that is going to be, um, we're going to be working with, uh, with uh, the chair um, on figuring out a solution that we brought up to the board for a final approval and vote. Um, we, as a department, are trying to see how that's going to work. Um, in compliance with the, the current bylaws and the definition of uh, uh, community interest stakeholder um, and, and the uniform age ordinance that has also been implemented and uh, uh, amended. 
um, since you are dark this December um, and January is the next meeting. Um, if you can please add as, as a motion for January, um, the ratification review and uh, ratification of the uh, newly amended and approved WNC bylaws um, for that. Uh, um, and then uh, after you make that a motion um, and then we work on how to do a selection process in the digital age, um, which will be brand new and exciting, um, unless some miracle happens. Um, it, we are under assumption it will be digital. Um, uh, we will we will be providing uh, WNC with more details uh, pertaining um, pertaining the selection process. Also in January, uh, just uh, also for your bylaws, it does state March 2021. So in January, if you want to make that motion to uh, change it uh, to a different date, um, I'm going to get back to you on that uh, to see um, how that can be done through a motion to 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 do that. Um, to change a date um, for that selection date. Um, uh, so it's gonna be a bunch of conversation between me, city clerk and, and the city attorney to see how that's going while we're having the election process for the other NCs. Okay, well, Freddie, check with CME because that's just what we had to do two years ago when we were selection and we were told when everybody in election was going over to the new cycle so nobody had to do it in, in the even number year, but it was going to be the odd number year. Uh, we were told because we were a selection, we didn't have to do it. We didn't have to go over, blah, blah, blah. And then we find out, no, we should have done it. And uh, so we had to do the same thing two years ago where we had to vote in our January meeting. Maybe I could find that agenda item. And uh, but check with Simi because she's the one and Vanessa that handled it two years ago. So Don needs to get really going here because I kept asking, asking about this for how many months, and here we are at the you know eleventh hour, twelfth hour, ninth hour, whatever hour they want to call it, uh, where we don't know what we're doing again. So uh, and the fact is pandemic, but we will definitely be talking, Lisa and I will be talking to you and Julian uh, about this, uh, uh, how we could possibly hold a selection with um, online for verification and everything else, but we will definitely um, be in touch with you guys. Um, Julian said he was going to set something up um, and I'll wait for that to happen. All right, so then uh, moving on. We're going to talk about the um, appeal. Um, as you know, the, w this board had voted to uh, oppose 1936 Westwood Boulevard, which was a, uh, going to be changed into a hotel. And um, we said that they were taking away the housing that was there now. We need workforce housing and, and the, um, planning department ZA who heard it didn't agree with us and uh, supported it and then it went to an appeal that the apartment union uh, if you remember Abby Coleman who um, had been coming to a couple of our meetings uh, nice bright young gal she is part of the apartment union and they took it on and went to the APC of course, Lisa reclused herself, but they went to APC and they were able to uh, overturn it. So now the project at 1936 Westwood Boulevard will not be turning into a hotel. Barbara, you want to talk? Let unmute her or unmute yourself, Barbara. Barbara, unmute yourself. There. Okay, you're muted. Okay, I was going to say Abby was representing the West Side chapter of the, the Tenants Union. Oh, Tenants Union. Um, okay. Tenants Union. And there was a broad range of people that spoke at the hearing. Terry represented the WNC um, and uh, Daniel Skolnick representing Council District 5. Uh, was a very effective speaker. He uh, documented through using uh, references to the LA City uh, 
general plan and the housing element, how this conversion did not meet the public benefit and uh, was a, a bad decision by the zoning administrator. And we learned in, in uh, the zoning administrator's comments that he really didn't consider the public benefit of housing versus a hotel when he rendered his decision, but that he focused purely on the issue of proximity to housing. So the conditional use permit that they sought required them to go through the, the process because this building was located within 500 feet of housing. And so that was what he focused on. And that was the only real issue in his mind, although he said he was uh, empathetic with the issue of housing, but I uh, felt that wasn't anything he could consider. So it was very interesting. And um, because Lisa had recused herself and the uh, fifth uh, commissioner had resigned, there were only three commissioners, which meant that we needed to get three votes out of three, which we did. Okay, so now we'll see what happens with that. Well, I thought it was very interesting when he admitted that for the last, what was it, nine years, he hadn't been operating as an apartment building and been operating as an Airbnb. Yes, so, and used the use, the right. unpermitted use, as a reason for why the project should be approved. So it was a little crazy. But yeah, it, I don't think he realized admitting he was illegal for nine years was a good plus for why he should get it approved. <laughs> but I'm anyway. sorry I missed it. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, then the last thing I want to talk about is not on the agenda, it's just what I'm going to say out loud is that, yes, we had elections and there was more than presidential. We had a lot of elections that impacted us uh, locally. And one of them was, is that our state senator is now half the WNC's supervisor, and that's Holly Mitchell, everyone. Yay, Holly Mitchell. And because of that, it leaves her seat open. And our assembly person, Sydney uh, Dove, has now today declared that she will be seeking state senate seat because it's open. So that will leave our assembly seat open. Assuming so, she gets elected. So by the way, uh, Autumn Burke is also going to go for it. So, But I thought, oh, for the state Senate? Yeah. Oh, okay, because she's an assembly person. She's Yvonne Burke's daughter. So she's got people. name recognition. Sim Sydney Kamlager is the assembly person for much of that say, state Senate district. So she has different name recognition. So we'll see. I mean, I don't think we yeah. can assume that Sydney will get elected. Yeah, but if she does, then we have the other seat. So it seems like our ear. And then we have, who's our Congresswoman? Karen Bass. So <laughs> we may be uh, waving bye-bye to her and, and maybe everybody will move up a notch. You know? So it's very interesting what's happening within the WNC's uh, represent mergers for our, our assembly, our state assembly, our Congress. So um, just wanted you to know, it wasn't just the presidential election that that um, was we should have focused on. So um, well, it'll be interesting to see how that all turns out. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that people are, you know, thinking of moving seats around. All right, Lisa, do you have anything about the business community other than there isn't any anymore? Yeah, hi, it's Lisa Morocco, C2. Um, you know, I was just gonna say no, but uh, you know, I do wanna just say this. Um, in January, I'll probably come back and give you a, a kind of post-mortem, I guess is the word, because it's a sad thing about how many businesses that we have lost on Pico and Westwood in our area. Um, I, was trying to pick Pico today myself at Colon Ice, and I saw a lot of for lease signs and a lot of plywood, and we're all seeing that. I mean, Terry and I and Shannon sat out on the sidewalk for the last night of West Side Tavern, and it broke my heart, breaking all of our hearts. So I guess what I want to say to you is I'll, I'll come back in January with a sort of um, real list of things of what's happening, but right now, anybody who's on this call 
anybody who's listening to our meeting, I just would implore you all to shop local as best you can this holiday season. Um, there's some really new shops like Gifted LA that just came to Pico Boulevard, who's right next to Colon Ice. Um, the WNC has a website that we put together called Click Pico, which I'm going to be revitalizing for the holiday season with a focus on gift giving, and hopefully that'll be up by Thanksgiving. Um, so I just wish everybody would just really think about shopping local as best they can this, this holiday season. And also keep getting takeout at least once a week. Um, that's what's helping our business, our restaurants, those that are left to stay in business. So if okay. you want anything to be here when this is over, you have to do something now. And I know I do for my personal HOA, I keep reminding them to do once a, a week if possible right. for takeout. Right. Um, also, uh, the food bank thing, Lisa, if you just want to throw it out. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. You know, I don't have that in front of me. It's, uh, I don't have any of the things in front of me. Oh, it's November. Well, let 20th. me ask uh, Karen. Karen, did anybody tell you about what Overland's doing with the flower thing on the 22nd on uh, Motor at the, it used to yes. be. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's a, they're doing the flower truck fundraiser at the Griffin Club parking lot. And they're also accepting donations for the Westside Food Bank. Um, they're asking for boxes of pasta. Yes. Right. Because Lisa asked and they need pasta, soup, granola bars, and the ever lovely cereal. But we thought because people would be walking to it a lot in the mm, name. Yeah. So uh, I know personally for my HOA, I'm going to do it within my HOA and we're going to ask for the soup as well. But Lisa's kindly said she would take it all to the food bank again. And uh, the one at, at, at for Overland School, that will be a WNC food bank drive. You'll do the flowers, we're doing the food bank. Lisa's going to leave trash cans. But I'm telling uh, Chevy or any of the other HOAs, if you want to just put out a small one and just have the drop off at one location, you won't get as much. But uh, given what we're seeing just even on Pico with all the businesses closing, those people don't have work now. And the people who work for them don't have work. And the yes. food really needs a lot of stuff right now. So what yes, they told me so was... The cereal, granola bars, soup, and pasta without, without sauce. I don't know. <laughs> Just no, pasta. She didn't say without sauce. You could throw in a box of that pommy sauce. That would be all yeah, right. Yeah, I, I think it's so on like glass. That's why. No, or, that box stuff. That's what I'm saying. The box, yeah. the pommy box. Is, is there a date? Yes, the 22nd from what? Two to November four. 22nd. I know that is my grandson's birthday. But is it the two to four? Um, hold on. Let me just double check my email. I just got it. Okay. I think it's two to four, something like that, uh, at which I used to call the tennis club. Now they're calling it something else. It's at Motor and, and uh, Manning, correct? Or yes, around? Motor and Manning. That's the Griffin Club now. Yeah, it used to be the tennis club. Yeah, well, it used to be the Beverly Hills Country Club, but That's we all right. thought of it as the tennis club. Right. Yeah. right. But but are we doing something different and taking things to leases? Or are we dropping there? What? Ever, uh, well, I mean, again, they they have a one place drop off at this. I, I volunteered to whatever's going to be there and take it to the food bank. Oh. If okay. if if anybody who wants to, within their HOAs want to gather and then get it to me or to that location. I'm happy to work with you either way. Terry had mentioned to them that we obviously get a lot more uh, donations when we have more locations throughout the area. But in this particular case, it's just going to be on November 22nd at this place at that time. 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. Oh, 12.30 to 2.30. So yeah. don't consider it, it's easier for them to walk over there. But like I said, I'm going to be sending an email to uh, to my HOA saying, if you want to do it, drop it at my house. So, and I, we usually have six locations within my own HOA. That's why, how many boxes of cereal did we get last time, Lisa? Uh, 417, I think. And, and uh, Fowler matched us 
and gave 417 boxes uh, another time after us. So they got 800 and whatever boxes. Hey, Besides Terry. First time, yes. Uh, I was going to say that if I'm available, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a truck as well. Uh, I can also help uh, pick stuff up and drop oh, stuff off. Thank you, Joe. Uh -huh. Yeah. It sounds to me like there's going to be a lot of stuff. I don't know. 400 boxes or so of huh. cereals. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, but we have to know that 417 boxes of cereal do fit into a Ford Escape, but oh, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure your pickup would be better. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, you know, if you guys need help, I, I think I'll be around that day, and I'm more than happy to. Thank the, you. the other, the other thing is that I did write to um, the LAPD station to ask if they're going to do a toy drive this holiday season. So we'll let everyone know if they are. Yeah, well, usually I was going to have a spring toy <laughs> to this uh, meeting, but I had it marked down. But no, because it wasn't like this, we didn't do it. But Jeff, that the twenty second is is as I said, Charlie's birthday, and that's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So it depends right. when you'll be leaving. If you're going yeah. Saturday or Wednesday, right. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I, I think I'll be around. Okay. And I'm more than if I am, I'm more than happy to uh, to help. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Of All course. right. My pleasure. So that and Lisa, aren't you going to be doing that thing that we gave you money for in January for businesses I'm to sorry, get them online? That. You and Jay. Uh, that is the uh, fa private Facebook page that we're putting together for businesses for Pico and Westwood. That's yes. What so you'll give us an update on that. I will be happy to. Okay, so now we still got to put money aside in case we have, we might have to put more than 2000 if they're going to, I don't know if it's going to be virtual though. We're so, let's, we're going to have to put this 2000 aside and decide. And right, I agree. It's Lisa Morocco C2. I think that, um, you know, like, as Terry said, we're in limbo here. Um, and I know that there's a lot of things out of our hands, you know, the pandemic, there's a lot of things that are changing. Um, but one thing is for sure, an election costs money. And so we'd be very smart. In fact, we have to uh, set aside funds uh, for whenever this selection election will happen. And so um, I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know what we're going to do but I know it's going to cost something. So we were estimating $2,000. Um, if it's a virtual thing, I, I just don't know. I'll have to get back to you in January about how we're doing it, when we know when we're doing it. Um, but I think it's prudent for us to, um, to put aside $2,000 at this point for our selection election in 2021. So that would be my motion. Okay, do we have a second? Yeah. Oh, crickets. This is uh, Jane C13. I'll second that. Oh, okay. appropriate uh, that Jane would second that. <laughs> is there any uh, abstaining from this vote? I, there... Do we have questions before we vote? Okay. okay. We have a question. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. The um, question is if currently we're, you, we, ideally, we wanted it to be June. When's our fiscal year end? If we set it aside, do we lose the money if it doesn't happen by June or do we have to redo it again or can we carry it over to 2022? Yeah, I had, uh, it's Lisa Morocco again. Good question, Joseph. I, I asked you. the same thing to Terry, um, but let's also remember that even if it's in August, you know, whatever we're doing this, we have to back it up four months, you know? So everything that we're doing, outreaching or whatever, uh, would be happening in the prior fiscal year. Now, yes, technically, if you read uh, our, our handbook, uh, anything that is an event needs to take place in the same fiscal year that uh, you're using the money for. But in this particular case, uh, you have to get outreach and you have to have four months prior. So if it's August, we're, we're talking about May at the latest. So um, I just don't think there's any other way around it. Um, Again, I wish I could tell you how we're using this money. I wish I could tell you what it's going to go for. It's just, we just don't even know how we're doing it yet. Um, so it's really just a placeholder until we know more, to be honest. Can I have to follow up on that, Lisa? Of course. So if we set aside 2000, um, if we spend 1500 by June 30th, what happens to the 500 we didn't spend? 
Well, it depends. Like, hopefully, we would know um, before June thirtieth. Let me just put it that way. Uh, our outreach would be uh, into such that we would understand that we're not spending that much money, and then it would go. We would be able to put it back into the pot and reuse it for something else. Our credit cards, I think, you can use until the first week in June. The last time an NPG or a funding request, I think it's mid June. Freddie can correct me. Um, so there will be time to reallocate. Um, if we have to, but to be honest with you, two thousand dollars isn't very much money. But again, we don't know how we're doing it. You know, if it's if it's virtual or what. So um, just, I just I, I feel terrible that I don't I just don't have any facts for you. I have nothing. Just wanted to, <laughs> just wanted to double yeah. check. Thanks. Uh, there is an opportunity, Joseph, uh, if to answer a lot of the questions. Uh, the city clerk is offering funding training that uh, financial officers must take. Um, if you want, you can sign up for. It. I can send you a link to that um for november's uh, financial training and that will answer a lot of the questions worth it okay yeah, joseph don't do it <laughs> three hours two hours but uh, also joseph we might know by february we might need to come back and ask for right. more money right. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think we'll know a lot more uh in the new year joseph and that would answer a lot of your questions Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just basically saying, yeah, well, let's put this as a placeholder and then we'll know more in January. I, I think Barbara has her hand up. I was just going to say, I was going to suggest that um, we might want to get bids or prices for doing large oversized door hangers that would cover the whole area uh, that could be used both as a way to announce the election and information and link to our website and then perhaps offer all the candidates that are running the opportunity to post statements on the website and talk about the issues. Um, it's probably too expensive to do a newsletter, but um, we might you know, want to look at a way of making sure that all the stakeholders are informed. And that's the neat, cheaper Barbara, way. Barbara, we already do that. We already put the statements like you write on the website, a right. Yeah. It was on the website. Right. As far as the door hangers, you know, Walkman and all the rest is very expensive. It'd be up to each seat to get them out to their uh, stakeholders. So right. I, mean, I think it, with, I'm sorry. It, go ahead. I was just going to say it disenfranchises the um, the apartment dwellers because most buildings are security buildings, and you can't get to their door to do a door hanger. And you can't hang it out on the security gate knowing that and try to get it to everybody so but i mean i would say that possibly that we're talking about placeholder money here not yes deciding right now what the budget is going to be used for exactly. so these are ideas right. that i would think lisa could take back yeah. and think about and by the way on the on the locked doors we do tape the messages with both sides showing inside and out to all of those doors when we leaflet the apartments and condos Okay, we're not going to. And they just quickly, Terry, I'm sorry, it's Lisa Morocco okay. C2 again. I just want everyone also to know that um, depending on how this happens, um, we might have to spend money on the actual physically on the election who's helping us run it. So it's not right. just even, you know what I mean? There's a lot of money involved here um, on not only just the getting the word out, but the actual event itself. So I just wanted you to have that in your head. Because city clerk won't do it. They okay, would exactly, do it because free. city clerk is not going to do it. All right, that's why we're going to try and postpone it for until the pandemic. So let's go back to voting now. Anybody abstaining? Anybody voting no? Okay, that one passed. So let's go now to homeless committee. Um, I, the park, I don't know if they cleaned it or not, because I was in Westwood Park the last couple of weeks since the trailer's gone. I don't know if they cleaned it. So somebody did ask last month to put deep cleaning. So, um, Sean, did you get any thoughts on all that stuff or figure it out? Yes. Or? Yeah, well, okay. as much as you can figure out with the city, as we well know. So uh, the first part of it, is that yes, uh, both Rancho Park and our Cheviot Hills Recreation Center and Westwood Park have had their trailers removed, have their fences taken down. Uh, and it is in the design or the protocol of both the uh, Department of Sanitation in conjunction with Rec and Parks to do a deep cleaning. Obviously in the era of COVID, that even becomes more critical. 
uh, and it is something that uh, the stakeholders have asked for, uh, and it is uh, something that I've been told both by uh, Rec and Parks and Lasan that they uh, were going to be doing, and that's part of the reason the gates are not open uh, yet at the Chevy Hills Recreation Center. Um, it, that the Chevy Hills Recreation Center is important to know, and it's going to tie into what I'm going to talk about for a quick moment now, uh, which is what Project Room Key is versus what Project Home Key is all about. Uh, it was clearly an emergency measure by the mayor who was looking for, oh my gosh, how am I going to solve these people that are at risk and that are on the streets and we're going to separate them from the pandemic. Ironically, or not so much ironically, actually, tragically, we now have spiking numbers again, and you can almost imagine that they might have to implement the very same thing, uh, which would be kind of crazy. But having said that, um, Project Room Key is important. You've heard those words. Uh, Project Room Key is essentially uh, similarly an emergency measure. It's the idea of utilizing uh, underused hotels, motels, et cetera, uh, and the city contracting with them and saying, hey, we need to house people, individuals immediately and get them into shelter. Uh, in CD5, there are only two uh, that are really in use. There's one on Ventura Boulevard and there's the Marriott on Olympic, which is in our more immediate WNC boundaries. Uh, that has been a source of a lot of controversy for a number of different reasons. Project Room Key is not vetted the same way as Project Home Key uh, or more permanent housing. Project Room Key is almost emergency triage and you need to think of it that way. Uh, and one of the ways you know the difference is that Project Room Key, uh, that emergency response, is actually refundable dollar for dollar by FEMA. So yeah, the federal funds actually get applied to Room Key, uh, whereas Home Key is much more about adding permanent interim to permanent housing, acquiring hotels. Uh, currently, the city is on track to purchase 10 of them, uh, none of which are on the west side of Los Angeles or within the boundaries of the WNC borders. Uh, and HECLA, which is the uh, housing authority of the city of Los Angeles, uh, is acquiring five of them uh, on their own independently. And these are all for housing individuals who are experiencing homelessness or unsheltered that are looking for permanent uh, or uh, truly an assisted uh, shelter program. So uh, the, the, there is an idea, and this kind of ties in with Judge Carter. Um, Judge Carter's order, which is one part really humanitarian and really uh, putting the feet to the fire of our elected officials uh, and saying, look, you got to do something emergency wise and you got to get them from underneath the, the freeways, which for whatever different reasons he has for it, whether it's the health and safety issues or concerns of the particulates or the off gassing or the pollution uh, or, or what I actually think is more insidious, which is kind of the trafficking that takes place along those routes. Um, nonetheless, he's put all, all council members on notice that they have to do this. He's individually met with them. Uh, and in fact, that's uh, true as Angel reported earlier that uh, largely at uh, an organization that had taken it up with the councilman had presented the councilman with a huge uh, petition of uh, nearly a thousand uh, letters. They had fundraised almost $50,000. They'd actually secured a major land use attorney uh, they were very aggressive with the city um, in saying, like, look, not here. We don't think this is the right place. Uh, it's important to note that very same organization, however, has identified and recognized that we do as a community, as a society, as a neighborhood, have to find alternative housing in our district, in our boundaries. Um, and so uh, that's actually one of the things that have come out as Judge Carter saying to uh, the councilman, in particular, our councilman, hey, listen, I can I can knock the park off the list, that's fine. Uh, but you need a bed, you need a bed and, we, and you need to put a place where somebody can go safely. Uh, and that's gonna tie into probably some of the legislation that we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, but I, I mentioned that because clearly um, we all recognize this is the issue. I, I met today with uh, a candidate for uh, that very same seat, the councilman seat, as some of you may or may not know, uh, he's turned out. Um, I've actually, <laughs> I've had about four meetings with four different people that thrown their name in the hat. Uh, Terry, I know you have too, because they had mentioned, I said, well, you always need to talk to the Grand Dame. Uh, and uh, in that, um, and in that conversation, it was first and foremost in every one of those persons or those candidates uh, subject. Those were the number one issue that they were addressing. Uh, so I do implore the stakeholders to creatively think, to press, 
uh, and, and, and see what you can do about unearthing resources or places where the city could get involved, where perhaps there's even wealthy landowners that are willing to donate land for a period of time uh, or sell land. Uh, most notably, I will tell you, if you are near a Project Home Key, uh, it's almost like you won't know that it exists. They are so well done. They are so done in a way that it is uh, innocuous. It really is minimizing impact and, and there's great sensitivity to it. And remember people going for home key are people that do not want to be unsheltered. So it's a very important distinction. These are people that want the help. They want the hand up, uh, not the hand out per se. Um, I, this is also gonna help me transition over to uh, uh, a, pro a program that was brought to my attention by one of our stakeholders, uh, Margaret Gillespie who is really somebody uh, that I'm sure many of the board members do know, uh, is somebody who's been very significantly contributed to the overall benefit of our community at large. Uh, and I don't know if we can promote her. I believe she's in the audience. And I would love her to talk a little bit about uh, foot on foot, foodonfoot.org. That's one of her programs. Uh, what's really exciting about that program that she would be promoting uh, and it's not a specific ask from us for money per se, as it is a promotion through our stakeholders to see how they can maybe consider participating with uh, the food on foot, uh, dot org organization. Um, I will suggest that they have a huge success rate, which is you know, really important to uh, addressing recidivism in homelessness. Uh, I think they're up at almost 85%, uh, which is really significant. They don't, uh, they've been around a long time. So are, are we able to, Jane, are we able to promote Margaret to, to uh, talk about it for a minute? What is Margaret's last name? Uh, Gillespie. Gillespie, yeah. Um, Gillespie. Uh, and and you have a, um, we have a participant who's had their hand up for a few minutes. Do you want to take that question first? Okay. Sure, I'll and take that. Uh, La that's but, Lori, Lori Levy? Yeah. Okay, but while go. she's unmuting, the food on foot was also uh, on Kelly Clarkson's um, TV show. So I have that link I could send out as well. It's amazing what they do. So Lori, uh, you have the floor, go ahead. Yes, hi, my name is Lori Bennett. I live at 2771 Forrester Drive. I have three questions. Hopefully you guys can grab a pen. I'm gonna go right through them. Number one is where were those homeless people in the temporary housing relocated to? Back on the streets and other housing. Question number two is, in the most recent newsletter, it says Paul Koritz took Rancho off the list of sites for relocation of these homeless people. Did our community contribute to that decision? And those are my questions. Uh, I, I can answer both of those. And thank you for those questions. Lori, is it? I'm sorry, I wanna make sure yes, I Lori. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first part is um, <clears throat> those people that were relocated were actually given options to go and transition to other housing and other projects. Um, and most notably the projects they were offered oh, no, are- froze. I froze? Am I frozen? No, no, no. no. Terry, okay. you're frozen then. <laughs> we hear they you. Go ahead, Sean. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm being assaulted by a helicopter. Give me one quick moment, please. You're always I, in the backyard. Don't they let you in the house? No, they don't. That's the whole point. They're like, take your loud voice and get outside. Um, so uh, the, um, uh, so to your, to your first question, Lori, those, they were given options of different uh, facilities that uh, the city and the county have. Um, one is in Lancaster. Uh, one is in Wilmington. And there are a few other sites. However, there are people that elected to not go back into shelter, that elected to go back on the street. Um, it is, you can't force anybody into anything, unfortunately, uh, and fortunately, right? Because that's the catch-22, where's their civil rights begin and end, and where do ours begin and end, and for stakeholders and homeowners and other mindsets, it's, it's different. It's a complex problem like that. So having said that, I do know that some people did elect to go back on the street, and it's important to note that many of the people that came to the uh, Chevy Hills Recreation Facility um, were from out of area. There were a lot of people from Venice, and there were people from the Palisades, there were people from uh, down south, uh, there were people from the inner city. Um, it was uh, really a kind of a crush to get some housing. What's interesting to me is these are all people that were qualified through the coordinated entry system meaning that they actually had to go through a vetting process and you would think that they would have some more success in trying to find alternative shelter. But then 
when you start to give them options like you can go to Lancaster or you can go to to Wilmington and I'm not really wanting to disparage either of those two places I'm just sick suggesting they are far away from the center of Los Angeles which is the neighborhoods and the communities these people tend to know um, uh, also uh, yes your organization in Chevy Hills uh, was actually very very instrumental in uh, motivating the councilman and giving the council uh, men uh, the information and the support from the stakeholders uh, with that uh, very large petition uh, and um, I do believe it was something that when he spoke to Judge Carter was able to say, Your Honor, look, I, I understand I'm a rock at a hard place, but here's the hard place. It's a thousand people that are opposing this uh, for numerous reasons. Uh, and the judge agreed to him, but the judge also put it to him and said, well, guess what? The clock's ticking. You got to find and identify another location. So I, I hope that's helpful. Okay, let's go to Margaret. So she can Hey, one second. Can we okay, so. Margaret, go ahead. Yeah, just let me know. I, it seemed like yeah. somebody else was talking. Um, so I really, really, really want to thank Sean and Terry for their amazing support for our little program. Um, so I'm on the advisory board of a homeless outreach organization that's known as Food on Foot. And um, where we really focus our uh, efforts is on what we call the unseen majority of folks who don't have housing. Um, we see as residents the most visible folks who are the ones with substance abuse problems or the ones with mental health issues. But those are actually the minority, the majority of folks who don't have shelter don't fall into that category. And the number one reason that they don't have shelter is due to economic um, downturn. And this was all before COVID. Um, the second reason, unfortunately, is domestic violence. So those are the folks that we are really geared toward. And to pick up on what Sean said, our philosophy is a hand up, not a handout. And so how do we do that? Um, we have three levels of assistance. We have a quote unquote normal serving every Sunday where we give out food and uh, clothing to folks in need. But our second layer is what we call the green shirts. And they come every Sunday and they participate in various workshops, life skill building, resume writing, how to interview. Uh, and they also spend a couple of hours picking up trash in the street and we watch how they work. Are they team players? Are they good at communicating? Are they responsible? Are they accountable? And um, once somebody has come for a minimum of 20 weeks uh, every Sunday, then they become eligible for what's really the crux of our program. And that's what we call the gray shirts. And at that level, they get um, a full-time job a fully furnished apartment and everything else that they need to succeed to get off the streets. So if they don't have a cell phone, we provide a cell phone. If they don't have clothes, we provide clothes. If they don't have um, you know, a gym membership even, we provide a gym membership because <laughs> exercise is important. Uh, and so these are the things that we provide at the gray shirt level. And at that point in time, they give us their paychecks, which we do not cash. We hold them in trust. And then when they have saved $5,000, we help them open a bank account. The majority, sadly, of the United States of America does not have even $1,000 set aside. And by the time that our folks graduate, they have $5,000, they have an apartment, and this is regular housing. It is not subsidized housing. And they have a full-time job. 
And as Sean mentioned, we have an 85% success rate, which is unheard of in this space. Normally, it's between 5 to 25%. So how do we do it? We work with everybody as an individual. We provide a community for them of other people who are on the streets, but who are looking for a way out. And we provide us, the volunteers, who are cheerleaders for them, who give them maybe a sense of family that they don't have, because a lot of these folks don't have a support system. And um, as part of that, we try to cultivate in them a sense of gratitude because gratitude is such an important emotion for feeling hope. And hope is what will get people out of this situation. So I'm gonna take two seconds to read something that somebody sent me who was um, a participant in our program because it truly encapsulates who we are and what we do. Um, dear Margaret, every day I wake up grateful for this second chance that you have given to me. I am grateful to be off the streets and grateful for an opportunity at life again. You are a blessing to me. You gave me hope again. I always kind of get teared up when I read that, but that's exactly what we're about. So why am I here and how can you help? Um, COVID-19 is something that we're all experiencing in different ways, but folks who are on the margin, the unseen majority, are the most effect. And uh, that's where we can really make a difference, one person at a time. So what I'm asking is for folks to think about, do they know someone who might have a job? Because our employers partner with us because they know that we've spent at least 20 weeks working with the candidate to make them a successful employee. Is there anyone who knows a landlord of a studio apartment that could be supported on lower wages? Because they do exist. We put our folks in studio apartments all over the city that can be supported on a minimum wage job. So do you know someone who can partner with us? Because again, we provide the first and last month's rent. We don't co-sign the lease, but we are there to help these folks be successful. And then the last thing, of course, is monetary or in-kind donations. We historically have not taken government money for a whole host of reasons. COVID has changed that. We've been forced to take certain grants, um, but we are very selective in the government money that we take because we have a successful model and we do not want, frankly, the government to interfere with that. And so um, what we can look to as funding is what we call our $98 club membership. It's exactly what it sounds like, individuals contributing 98 a month. We have corporate sponsorships, some fabulous companies who are working with us. And then on our website, we talk about all kinds of other ways that you can contribute individually to fundraisers or hygiene kits. Right now with the weather changing, unfortunately, sleeping bags are the real, um, you know, rubber meets the road need. Unfortunately, somebody that we know died um, with the cold, cold spell. Um, because they didn't have a sleeping bag. So um, Lisa, I am so happy to you know, talk to you about the partnerships we've had in the past. 
Uh, for those who don't know, I'm actually also on the Cheviot Hills HOA board. Um, but you know, the we've Cheviot Hills has been enormously successful with the cereal drive and the soup and the everything else that you guys have done. And um, I just huge shout out to Lisa for all of her work on that. So that's in a nutshell, what we do and how we do it. Um, as Terry mentioned, we were on the Kelly Clarkson show recently, and I believe Terry was graciously put up um, the link to that. So you can see a couple of our graduates and the difference that we've made in their lives. And also our clinical director, whose heart just comes through. So thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And if anybody has any questions, uh, certainly Sean knows how to find me, but I think Lisa does too. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank Margaret, you. I, I, I'd love to make a quick comment. I think it's important. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to share with the stakeholders is that the program that Margaret's involved with and Food on Foot really uh, helps establish or, if you will, acts as a, a mechanism that moves people forward into housing. And so theoretically, they start to free up the temporary resources by transitioning people into more permanent spaces. And because they are willing and participating in the way that they do, they literally create room for people that are on the street that can't get to services to actually get or have available services. So I mentioned that because I think it works in conjunction with other efforts really well. Um, but I will say this, based on their success rate alone, uh, I think the stakeholders should really strongly consider how we can support uh, whatever way we can. And certainly, as I think I mentioned earlier, I think of wealthy landowners that I know, and I think maybe they have some property that they can spare or work or donate or what have you. So anyway, that that's my two cents on that. Um, and then uh, I don't know if there's anything else, Terry. Daisy, uh, and the website, once again, is foodonfoot.org. And I encourage everybody to go to it. And on our website, we have that, plus the link to the Kelly Collections show. And thank you. And they have not missed a day, not even during the pandemic, not during the rain. They have made every Sunday uh, forever. And I can amend them for that. So if you would like more information or maybe want to help out, you know, get in touch with Sean, who can get you over to Margaret. So thank, thank you, you, Margaret. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Um, so Terry, we have a, a new participant hand up, Hannah Levy. Um, OK, yes. is this question going to be for Margaret? Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, Hannah, the question you, is about you have one minute or you're not Hannah. Oh, maybe you are Hannah. Sorry. Well, I'm yeah, I'm with okay. Hannah. Um, as I understood it, the petition that was signed regarding homelessness in the park uh, was about the temporary um, reason, uh, replacement of homeless people so, uh, that was supposed that ended in September. Um, the only other communal action that I'm aware of regarding um, uh, the homelessness in the park and as far as the, the long-term housing was a GoFundMe that raised over $40,000. Um, I'm interested uh, as to uh, what exactly it was that uh, contributed to Paul Coretz to taking um, Rancho Park off of the list because uh, as far as I know, there was no um, communal action other than the GoFundMe. Right. There wasn't any action. It was meetings. And uh, Paul heard loud and clear from the WNC. We had this on for two different meetings. He heard loud and clear from Chevy and Hills. He heard loud and clear from the surrounding area. And um, that's what he brought forward to uh, when he personally and it wasn't easy for him to do, but because, uh, you know, he's a high risk but he personally met with the judge to tell him that this park, and I believe Westwood too, but for sure Chevy Park could not be used. And uh, all along the head of the parks, you know, Rexon Park, uh, he did not want it to be, Mr. Shule did not want it to be used either, Mike. 
So I think that that's how the message Does got. Does anyone through. have any information on the GoFundMe? You know what? We don't, and and you, us. yeah, it's, that has nothing to do with us. And also, if you have questions about how Paul Koretz made his decision, you need to talk to Paul Koretz's office. Angel's no longer on the call, so we really can't answer your questions. Okay. Thanks. All right. So put your hands down, Jamie. What did you, is your question for? Margaret or what? Hold on. Jamie, you can unmute now. Yeah, I, I have I have a question regarding uh, this, this program. Okay. All right, um, you have one minute, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Um I've I'm, this is the first time I've listened into um this this meeting for this committee. So um just curious, where do you get off? Um what kind of program has to have a meritocracy? in order to receive help. I don't understand why there's a shirt system. And if you've had to collect funding, but did not get grants before and are a successful model, why do you need grants now when most charities and outreach programs have surpluses at this point? I just don't understand why you're all championing this program when there are so many advocates and so many different programs that are doing this work for free as volunteers. And I work with them myself. There's groups like Street Watch, there's LA Can, there's all sorts of people doing outreach where you don't have to have a- Five floor. seconds. I just, this is awful. So I'll be happy to respond to that. First of all, I donate hundreds of hours for free. So it isn't an issue of not having folks who give their time. We, that's all we depend on really. Um, and as far as the grants, we have historically not uh, sought government funding for a number of reasons. And if you wanna reach out to me individually, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. But um, we have been successful because individual people have come out and have met our um, participants and have seen the work that we do. Um, and there's really no other measure of efficacy or, um, you know, doing the right thing than our success rate. We have an 85% success rate for folks being in the same job and living in the same normal housing. It's not subsidized housing. It's not supportive housing. It's just a regular apartment. Um, you know, we bring people back from the streets to mainstream, and that's what we're all about. And we do that with private funding. And as I said, most of it comes from individual people just giving $98 a month. You know, what is that? A couple of takeout dinners. Um, but it's just, I, if you want to reach out to me, please do. I would be happy to tell you everything that we do and how we do it because there are, it's all transparent and it's just an, a model that works. All right. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so um, let's move on now to the, the city attorney report, R20. Um, Back to you, Sean and Mary. We, we decided, right, that you were going to do something about adding or writing a letter. We weren't going to do some action. I forgot. What is it, Sean? Sean, is he still with us? I think so. Did He might have dropped. Oh, no, no, there he is. I see him. Come on, Sean. Yeah. Having some technical no, difficulties. <laughs> you know what, Sean? Next time you come to my house, you'll be in another room, but <laughs> you'll be indoors, okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Uh, all right. So, Terry, were we just talking about the uh, the councilman 
uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, city the attorney's attorney. letter. Yeah, that what we wanted to write a letter and that you and Mary uh, talked to some stakeholder who had some something they wanted to add, whatever. So I put on this right now on the screen is the language that Mary sent me that I think is what you're talking about, Sean. That... Yeah, let me see. Mary, do you do you mind making a comment on it because you did send it along? Sure, no problem. Okay, so um, what's on the screen is a suggestion uh, that we would like to um, present to the Neighborhood Council, to, I, I believe in the form of a motion to um, add, to send a letter to Paul Koretz asking that this language is added to the motion that city council will be discussing on November 24th, the one that was tabled because the, um, the matter was so highly contested. Angel touched on it earlier during her report. Um, and basically the recommendations of the language to add is um, Add a paragraph stating, um, I mean, the ordinance is basically about where the individuals are. And Sean, you can maybe provide a little bit more clarification on the ordinance that the city council has, um, that was on the floor earlier this week, I believe, or last week. Um, so basically the language is add, um, to paragraph three, by sitting, lying, or sleeping, or by storing, using, maintaining. I mean, it's on the screen. I think you all can read it. But basically, the point is, the main point is, the part that's in, in bold at the bottom of paragraph B, um, neighboring or adjacent uses or public safety. To add that language in, we want to add the language that, um, because I think, Sean, if you can talk about the motion, that would probably well. be helpful. Yeah, the, it, essentially, it's basically, um, it's kind of contesting the right to rest, if you will, within the city, uh, talking about sitting, lying down, sleeping in public areas, uh, and the actual uh, motion as it is, as I understand it, or the ordinance that they're putting together, uh, is basically saying at no time shall a person obstruct a street, sidewalk, or other pedest uh, uh, right of way for open for, for pedestrian travel, which quite frankly, I always thought was on the books. Uh, and then they start to discuss about by sitting, lying, sleeping, or storing, or maintaining personal or putting personal property in a manner that does not allow for passage as required by the American Disability Act of 1990. Um, you know, it, it, so basically the city is, is saying like, look, they want to have an enforceable uh, ordinance so they can say like, you just can't put a tent city and block the sidewalk or the street or the alleyway or vital places where people are congregating or, or excuse me, that people need to access. Um, so uh, I think it's designed to give the city power uh, to be able to enforce the ordinance. So I, I think the general idea is that we wanna be able to support that. Uh, and I think that there was the modification that was suggested that we add uh, or neighboring or adjacent uses for public uh, uh, or public safety. So that left it a little more interpretive that if you found yourself going through an alley and you couldn't all of a sudden pass the alley or if you came through where we were experiencing on Pico and Bentley as an example where the tent city had all of a sudden bloomed into you couldn't okay. actually cross Pico you couldn't go by on the sidewalk you had to go around it into the city street which of course was dangerous um, so that that's my understanding of it it's basically you can't store things you can't erect and block the public access um, and uh uh, for the most part, I think our, our position has been that we want to support that. Um, interestingly enough, in talking to a civil rights attorney, they offered a very different opinion and said, you're going to have a big battle that's going to go very far up the court system. It's going to be very hard to enforce, but that was a different commentary. So, okay, so then we have um, four people. So, so we need a motion. Yeah, that's this. what I'm saying. Um, so have we supported, I was not here last month, have we supported the council file uh, no. before? No, 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 we did not. We did okay. not. So then the motion might be that, well, the, the question is, do we want to support the council file, the motion, if, uh, if this language is added? Is that the intent? I think yes, that maybe, is. The, 
Well, would we want two separate um, motions, one to support the council file and the other to add the um, language to amend the motion? Well, that, those are two entirely different things because one says we support it the way it is right now and hey, it would be nice to add this. And oh, the other okay, one says gotcha. we only support the council file if this language is added. Mm. And that's my question is which is your mm. intent? That's a good question, Sean. You what are your <laughs> I would love to have a, a consensus of the board. Quite honestly, I'd rather discuss it and understand what the board's feelings on are, are, well, I would thoughts are. I recommend you make the motion that we support the council file if this language is added, and then that then you can have the conversation with the. With Thank the, you, Jane. I and appreciate there are a that. number of people in the audience that would like to speak on this as well. So you are definitely the parliamentarian for a lot of good reasons. So yes, I do make the motion as suggested by Jane. So for the minutes, it's uh, that we support council file the number I don't remember right now, with the under with the caveat that this language be added. Yes, thank you. And is okay, there a so second? that is it's the motion, and I assume Sean's making it. Mary seconding. Yes, I'll second. Okay, now we can have discussion. We okay, want. We have a bunch of people in the audience um, that would like to speak to it. We did the audience first. Is that right? They get one minute, and um, we're going to close it. Any more right now? Raise your hand, or because we're going to close it. So if you haven't had your hand raised, okay, all right. More, two more. 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 Going once, going twice. That's it. All right. Okay. So we have. One, two, you count them. Um, that I'm would sorry, Olga, you're too late. Um, All right, so you'll get one minute each. Uh, each hand that's raised will get one minute. Ready? Okay. Let's... Michael, uh, you're going first. You can unmute yourself. And, and please tell us how you're a stakeholder within the WNC. That means do you live here or do you work here? Hello, neighbors. Oh, we can't hear you, Michael. Can you speak louder? Yes. Can you hear me? That's you better. Hear me? Can, hear can you hear me? Yes. Hello. I am a homeowner on Vista Street Neighbors. I want you to know the reason why that civil rights attorney told Sean that this is going to be a problem is because this is frankly unconstitutional. Uh, Judge Carter has made clear these kind of criminalization ordinances are only constitutional if we are providing shelter. And this whole meeting, we have heard that, in fact, we aren't, not in our city, not in our district. And therefore, counsel, please. We need to have as much compassion and kindness for these unhoused people as we do enthusiasm for collecting cereal boxes. We should not make our disgust or poor governance taken out on these people because it is uncompassionate and unkind. Thank you. That's time, thank you. Next. My timer is still going. Okay, Michael Scott. Tell, tell us tell. how you're, how are you a constituent? Yes, hi, uh, my name is Michael Scott. I am a resident. Uh, I live near Olympic and Overland. Uh, I would just like to reiterate that this is an unconstitutional uh, measure, not to mention incredibly cruel, uh, to suggest that uh, unhoused people cannot sit, lie, or sleep or you know, exist in public just because there may be a facility within 500 feet, facilities that uh, you know are are completely inhospitable to people with spouses or people with pets. Uh, you know, th this is not what is going to solve homelessness. Criminalizing homelessness is not what ends homelessness. You can you know push people around all they want; they're just going to move from place to place. And the solution to homelessness is Ten housing. It, so I yield the rest of my time, but you, you all are about to hear from a lot of people who are opposed to this, and I hope you're in for a long night. Okay, next. Thank you. And uh, Zach, unmute yourself and tell us how you are a constituent. 
Well, yeah, I hey, am a resident off Pico, um, and I just want to say your own councilman um, at the meeting, the city council meeting, said that he wouldn't support this because all this is going to do is push the unhoused people further into residential neighborhoods, which I know this group of people doesn't want. Mike Bonin correctly stated that this, this whole motion and ordinance is based on a lie that there is housing available when we know there is not. Councilman De Leon said this is the same failed draconian policy that has mired the city in lawsuits. As the other commenters have said, you guys should really oppose this. And it's, it's kind of remarkable that you didn't think this was cruel and far reaching enough. You wanted to add more language to make it more uncomfortable for more seconds. unhoused people. So I would really suggest that you oppose this motion. It's vile, it's cruel, and it doesn't solve anything. Time. Thank you. All right, Lisa Redman. Hi. Uh, you know, I'm going to urge you very much uh, to oppose this motion. Uh, you know, you had Angel on earlier talking about Coretz meeting with uh, Judge Carter. And just this past Thursday, Judge Carter, when Councilman Joe Buscano and Blumenfeld wanted this measure to pass because there has to be consequences, the judge flat out told them, no, we've got to get housing instead. The problem is, is that discussion is backwards. This, he said the court's never going to allow anything unless housing is there. So we need to push for housing. And as someone else mentioned, uh, I can't remember, but one of the public schools around here did uh, a mapping of this measure and it takes away more than 50% of available space. And if you're gonna add that on even more so. So it will push encampments further and deeper into housed residential areas, Time. which I'm sure you don't want. Time, thank you. Olga, I keep taking your hand down because you did not have your hand up before uh, Terry declared it closed. That's why I keep doing that. Uh, Jamie, you're up next. Hello again, I'm a resident off of Olympic. Um, again, just first time really participating in the neighborhood council. Um, really kind of surprised how fast uh, there, this was seconded after so much leisurely talk and discussion. Um, it's alarming to me as a constituent that you clearly don't understand what you're about to do. Um, this is just cruel. Um, these people need housing, they need assistance, they need resources, and you're trying to sweep them away. Um, I'd love to probably be run, running for this council soon. This, this is awful. I, I can't believe that I've seen this tonight. Uh, I yield the rest of my time. Okay. Thank you so much. And Sophie, you're up. Hello, um, I'm just calling in to voice my strong opposition to this council voicing their support for this measure. Um, I think it's really cruel, inhumane, and very unsafe, particularly in the time of COVID. Um, we have seen studies showing that conducting sweeps like this and criminalizing unhoused people um, just leads to much uh, more unsafe conditions. And I'd like to yield the rest of my time to Olga, because I think it's really inappropriate that you are not letting Olga speak um, based on a very arbitrary rule. Okay. Okay, Olga, you have 40 seconds. Hi, Jane, I had my hand up and you actually lowered it when they said to stop raising hands. So thank you. I well, did file a complaint with Dunn about that. Second, this is an unconstitutional motion. This completely violates Supreme Court standard and every single homelessness advocacy organization opposes it. Your own city council member explained why he opposes it. 
It doesn't make any sense that you're supporting this. Nobody likes this. None of these are proven methods to take away from homelessness. I spoke to you during general public comment about how you refuse to put any affordable housing in this neighborhood. Ten how seconds. is that not the real crime here? How are you criminalizing people for sleeping in public right of ways? when you don't even offer them shelter anywhere. There are 10,000 shelter beds in Los Angeles for 60,000 unhoused people. This is absolutely ridiculous. And this That's council time, should be ashamed of itself. Thank you. Uh, okay. What happened to Hannah? I thought Hannah had the hand Oops, up. Hannah, I'm sorry. I may have accidentally, did you put your hand okay. up, Hannah? Okay, here we go. Hannah, you're up. You have to unmute yourself, Hannah. There you oh, go. Um, I'd like to echo the sentiments of some of my comrades who spoke for me. I think this is extremely cruel and um, senseless. And I'm wondering if instead of you people um, deciding this, um, making this decision, if we could um, make this a communal referendum, because clearly there's a lot of opposition um, to to this policy. I yield the rest of my time. Okay, thank you. And our last speaker was going to be, uh, did I Casey. just act? What happened to Paul? Was it Paul or Peter? I'm oh, sorry, it was Plume. So Where'd you go? Did he, did he disconnect? Oh, here he is. Oh, Peter. there he is. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, allow to talk. Here we go. Peter, unmute yourself. Yeah, hi. I would just, you know, really like to uplift all the comments you guys have already heard so far um, and reinforce the fact that this is just unnecessarily cruel and blatantly unconstitutional. And the city has lost these lawsuits time and time again. And to spend your time to reinforce something like this simply which won't have an effect, right? It'll get knocked down by the courts. All you are doing is broadcasting your loathing for people who just don't have money and are stuck living on the streets because of the policy failures of our city. And it, it's really t a terrible, terrible thing to see. Um, and even the cruel city motion put forward by Mike Shore wasn't enough for you. You're adding even more cruel language to it. Um, and it, it's really just appalling to see. Um, and I really hope you take a moment and just like, Think about what it is you're asking to do in sweeping away people just because you don't want to see poverty in your neighborhood. And this is not a solution. This is what we have tried. This is why Ten we are seconds. in this position to begin with, because these are the exact failed policies the city has pursued for decades, and they have failed time and time again. And doubling down on them is, is not going to help time. anyone. It's not going to help. That's time. Thank you. Okay, Peter got his hand. All right. Okay, I want to say something. I have some comments to make. First of all, I think it was Jamie or someone who said we seconded it right away. You have to second a motion before you can have a discussion. So that's why it was second, so we can have the discussion so that you could put your input in. Otherwise, you know, that you, you have to second a motion before you can have a discussion. And uh, I'm taking issue with people who are saying that we, we try to sweep this under the carpet or we don't like this and we don't want to see them. We have personally in this neighborhood council uh, found there was a homeless person that was living on Expo. I personally started talking with him, as did other people. And we found out that he wanted to go back home to Toga, Toga, I think it was Toga. Do you know that we worked with him? The police worked with him. They went to the uh, uh, to get him a passport again because he didn't he lost his job. He couldn't find his passport and he was living on the streets. We got him a passport. We paid the cops paid for his airline fare. They got in touch with his cousin who would take uh, charge of him when he got there. But, but so, Terry, you're not speaking to the motion. 
And yes. uh, as the Mr. parliamentarian, is we don't care. And I'm tired. I think okay, but we this need is all the time for that. Know who don't even attend a neighbor council meeting. Okay. All the work Sean's been doing and people like uh, okay. Margaret have been doing. And for them to sit here and say, we don't care, I take issue with that. Okay. All right, so we're to back to the, motion. the board's turn. Does anybody on the board have any comments they want to make? Well, I do. I do. Mark Zedlander. Okay, Mark, go ahead. Hi. Um, so I, 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 I intend to um, oppose the motion. Um, I, I think there's a number of issues with it. I mean, constitutionality aside, which a number of uh, stakeholders have raised, um, I, I just don't know if there's going to be any... Uh, tangible policy benefits to it either. Um, I think some of this behavior may already be prohibited. Um, there's obviously um, enforcement issues that the police have raised with us at other meetings, but um, I think that some stakeholders have probably correctly raised that there'll be constitutional issues with this. Um, I'd love to see how the city attorney's office uh, plans to address those. And uh, considering the, the level of opposition, the likely constitutionality issues, and the probably very minor uh, benefits that might come from this, um, I, I, I just, I see myself opposing. I, I'd yes. like to speak to you, Terry. Okay, Jane, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a walker and I walk around the neighborhood and nothing annoys me more than when I can't get through on the sidewalk. And I think that's what part of this was aimed at was just trying to make sure the sidewalk stay clear. But I am also opposed to the motion for all the reasons that the numerous uh, commenters said from the participant group, um, you know, it's not the answer. And in the same way that we're saying that um, having police deal with people who are dealing with social issues or domestic violence issues or whatever, I mean, like we need to not criminalize everything. And I do think that the approach that Sean's nonprofit is using Hopefully that's getting time to, John, let us know. But um, of having dedicated social workers, these are the ways that we, we solve the problem, not by terminalizing it. So I also oppose the motion. Okay, and I just wanna add also for, uh, as a point of reference is that just because a motion is on the agenda does not mean we are here to support it. It's brought to us, we put it on the agenda. As I began my part, I said about the project on 1936, uh, or whatever the address was on Westwood, This it was brought to us, we opposed it. So for all of you that just attacked us, saying how cruel we were, how mean we were, just because it's on the agenda, do not think that it's there because we wanna support it that it's a done deal. It's on the agenda because someone brought it to us, just like you would bring something to us if you indeed are a stakeholder within our boundaries, then we put it on. Stakeholder brought it to us, we put it on. The, for, for all the comments where you, where you all assumed because it was on, we brought it on, we wanted it on. I just want you to know that's not how this uh, uh, WNC operates. We do listen to stakeholders. We do not pick and choose what we put on our agenda if a stakeholder brings it to us, like we're going to put on next month the Beverly Glen issue. So I just had to get say that too, because uh, there was a, a lot of um, statements now that made it sound like we just went out and we hate these people and we're tired of seeing it and we wanted this to happen. So just know we listen to the stakeholders, we put it on the agenda, then we make a decision, not before. Anybody else on the uh, uh, panel, uh, the board that wants to make a statement? Yeah, it's a high Lisa Morocco uh, seat too. Um, you know, I, I, I certainly have listened to all the comments tonight. All I will offer up as I'm the business seat, I'm one of the business seats um, here on the WNC. And, um, I, you know, I just want to just take, I, I, I get everything. I heard it, I hear it and I feel it. But I also am representing the businesses. 
and they are getting killed by encampments that are um, closing down their front doors. They have to hire extra security to even stay open. Um, it, it's, it's becoming overwhelming. So this might not be the document to address all of that, but all I'm saying for the record is that we need something to help the businesses um, during this time. I, I, I know I'm not, um, not putting aside the, 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 the tragedy of being unsheltered, but I'm just saying that those businesses are suffering as well. And I need to, the, the public to know that the way, I don't know how other NCs, I know we have people here from Solro and other NCs, but we listen to you first. And then that closes. That's why I said, okay, we're closed after this person. And then we come to the board because that way the board hears what you have to say before we start voting or before we start talking among ourselves. So we already gave the, um, the stakeholders their opportunity. This is our opportunity. So if you're raising your hand, please take it down because we already went through um, the stakeholders time. Um, you just, uh, we don't go back and forth. We listened and now we're doing our time and then we will now vote on it. Um, and that's- Barbara has her hand up. Okay, Barbara. Thank Barbara. you. Thank you, I, I'm on. Um, I, I think that uh, we are in a very tenuous place right now because for those of us who want to help and give people a hand up, uh, there are different types of homeless. There are different issues that people face. And some people do want help and some people don't want help. And I think that the general population in the communities are coming to a point where their compassion is running thin. And I think that organized homeless advocates need to understand similar to the, the issues that the businesses are facing with, it's just getting to be a lot uh, of, of threatening and troublesome behavior. And I think when you see sidewalks that are covered and impossible to pass and, and people, we have a constituent who said, I can't go to my dentist anymore, I can't walk there. The route I take is impassable. When, when we have a lot of visual assault, personal assaults, actually one of our constituents was attacked by a homeless person last week while running, um, it, will, it will make it very hard to continue to be completely compassionate and understanding. And I think that we have to divide up the different types of homeless population, the unhoused, and recognize that there are some unhoused people who can't help themselves and are a danger, not only to themselves, but to us as well. And I think that's what I am hearing more and more where people feel the issues of defecation and feces on the sidewalk and impassibility of sidewalks is going to harm the ability to help the others because people are getting fed up. And that's where I think this kind of emotion came from. Um, I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying one way or the other. What I want to do is to say to those who work hard on behalf of the homeless that there, we can't pretend that everything is going to work out and that everyone wants help or wants to be housed or wants to behave in a way that they are welcome on our sidewalks. Because in some cases, that's not true. Merchants should not have to lock their doors during daytime hours to be safe in their own stores. And they should be able to have their customers walk through the doors and not fail to frequent them because there's a homeless encampment in front of their door that you can't even see past. So I think we have to recognize all sides of the problem and then work from there together to try and sort the solutions out. Um, 
I, I wanted to raise, and I don't know if I can do it while we're having this discussion, um, I wanted to mention that for those who don't know, this neighborhood council area is the site of CD5's only permanent supportive housing project that is going to be- Barbara, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's not pertinent to this motion. Okay. So we really- when the, motion, right when the motion is finished, I would like to make one additional comment about some sheltering. Okay, I would like to talk to Freddie now. Freddie, are you there? Freddie. Freddie said he had to leave. Oh, sorry. At yes. So. Uh, okay. I was trying to answer. I was trying to answer some emails uh, that I recently received, um, and uh, trying to communicate this with my director. But uh, to first clarify on, on this matter, um, please. Uh, um, uh, let's not uh, lower hands unless um, it is uh, unless you know they've already spoken once already and you know they've already taken their bite of the apple. Um, there are yeah. uh, regulations this is, that. Yeah, this uh, is my question. What's the question again? My question to you is: If we close public comment, which we did, ask, uh, and people keep raising their hand, I thought once you close public comment, it's closed. Yes, uh, when when the time of public comment has been offered, and all of those members that have been offered uh, the time to, to do public comment, and there were no other hands raised, um, they they uh, as long as the NC has offered the opportunity for all individuals to have at least spoken at least once during that public comment, then they have then and the NC has the ability then once all the public members have spoken. To then close public comment to then start board discussion and, and that's what board... i did and now i see four more hands up yes maybe they might raise uh they might have uh, i lowered other... their hands because we had already ended the public portion and then they and i think that's the nature of the complaint you're getting now was not all of them had spoken during the public comment section on this issue some had and some had not but and, we had moved on to the board comment now. And, and I must say that today in the Plum Council hearing, uh, they limited participation to a set number of minutes. And there were those of us who were on the phone for two hours and never got to speak because they said, we're limiting the comments to a certain amount of time and we're giving everyone a minute and it'll go as long as it goes. So, and, so when I come out when I say I'm closing it, speak, put your hand up now. Okay, it's closed. And then they keep putting their hands up and call and saying uh, they're doing a complaint to you. If I close it, whether people are still speaking because there's still a lineup, that's one thing. But the, now for sure it's been closed because we went to the board and there's four hands up. Do I, it's, uh, my question to you is, Freddie, is mm -hmm. this could go on all night? Um, we closed it, and do I have to now go back and have these people speak? So now we have five people with their hands up. Yeah, but three of them already spoke. Right. And okay. Six so um, w when was the was the uh, a notice to the public clear that? Uh, public comment was closed. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and again, this is being recorded. So obviously, you know, and I'm seeing even more hands uh, pop up right now. Yeah, because um, I, for I, I for, closed, for members of Freddie, Freddie, I said, yeah. I am closing it. We're taking what's up here. I'm going to close it. Put your hand up now or forever hold your peace. I mean, you can hear that on the recording. And yet now more people are raising their hands. Yes. Uh, so um, we did, Freddie, we did listen to everyone who had their hand up. There were no hands up from the attendees at the time that Terry went to the um, to the panelists. OK, uh, then, you know, and, and when you closed it um, and I see even more hands coming up now. Uh, right. um, and I so then I lowered them all because the, there were four that kept putting them that kept and we heard from three of those four anyway, but you know, it, it's like, I'm sorry, we've been here two and a half hours already. Yeah. 
so um, right now, and wow, it's a long list of uh, people here. Um, so once you, you close public comment and you're, you're right now under the board discussion period for this Ooh. agenda item with regards to uh, the resolution on uh, public safety on, on the, oh, the homelessness issue. Okay. The homeless issue, yes. Um, so, you know, this is a very heated topic. Um, so we have one more board member who has their hand up. Yeah. Um, so, when it comes to, to the, these public comments, um, have any of them already spoken once? Yes. I'll tell you who Lisa Redman, Peter Klune, Jamie, Zach, Olga, uh, Michael Scott. How can you have your hands up twice, Michael Scott? And there's one, two's Michael Scott. So, I'm saying everything. So, so I probably don't... shared his link with somebody. Okay. Well, he, we're only going to have one Michael Scott. Uh, so those are the people that have already spoken. I remember. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Nazi did, but because they're, you know, that. But that's like the first hand that went up again for the second time. Okay, so if they've already spoken, uh, they don't speak again, correct? Uh, um, yes, that would that would Even be. Even we closed it, we now have to go back to the people who had spoken. Generally, that, that is not a, a practice done, but that is a, up to the decision of the chair to go back and offer more public if the issue or item is as contentious as, uh, as, as and heated and uh, as immediate as, as the issue of homelessness. Um, again, that, that is a, a discretionary action that uh, you as a chair have and can do. Um, uh, I would, I would suggest maybe uh, opening it for those who haven't talked. Uh, but uh, again, um, since you already have already moved on to board discussion, um, again, you know, I, I would I would defer to yours uh, to your right now. I'm I'm reaching out to my director uh, to see um, possible action that could occur um, on behalf of this board. Um, but um, Tara, why don't you go ahead and take the two board members that want to speak while Freddie okay. is figuring this out? Okay, two board members speak. Who are they? Go ahead, and call them. Mary Williams. Go ahead. Okay, hi. Uh, I have to admit, I'm really conflicted on this matter because, um, and I don't know that this particular city motion is the one. It seems so highly controversial that, um, and I really hear what the stakeholders are saying about um, the uh, the sweeps and the unconstitutionality and so on and so forth. Yet, on the other hand, we work really hard in this community. I'm on a homeless uh, task force. Um, and it was my understanding that on this particular thing, we're basically, trying to open up the sidewalks so that our businesses can operate. And, you know, um, it's, it's really a balancing act and it's a really, really tough one. This issue is so complicated and I have so much compassion for those who live on the street. And believe me, I'm working to try to help solve the problem, be a part of the solution. Um, and on this particular issue, I'm really conflicted because um, and, you know, I suggested the language to protect the neighborhoods. Um, so basically, um, I just wanted to kind of weigh in on where I am with it. I'm still kind of wanting to hear more from other board members and see where they are with it. And then Kim, go ahead. Um, so my comments are as follows. Um, I, I too am somewhat conflicted. I see both sides of this issue. I have a lot of compassion for homeless people and our board 
um, thanks to Sean and uh, others have put a lot of time and effort in trying to help our homeless or unhoused community. Um, and, uh, and I know, you know, there has to be a reasonable place for them to go. Conversely, I agree with Lisa that it is also a hardship and unfair. And it's not only just to our businesses and our community, but to all of the citizens, we each all, every single one of us have certain reasonable expectations that we can walk down a street safely on a sidewalk and not in the roadway into oncoming traffic. There are laws in this country that are not local laws that are federal regulations called Title 24 American with Disabilities Act that sets up rules to protect people who are disabled, people who are in wheelchairs, people who are disabled and have limited motor ability. There are certain protections that sidewalks have to be clear in a certain width in order that there's safe passage for people to, to move down a, a sidewalk, which is what is for pedestrians. So I too am conflicted. And I think sometimes that side of the conversation is missed. Um, so there is a safety aspect to it. Um, I, I don't know whether I support the specific motion. Well, I guess one of the questions I have for those who have worked on it or possibly for Freddie, is this amended language. Obviously the city attorney's office um, has spent the time researching it. I know this has been a, a, a big issue about the constitutionality of it and it having gone to the courts. I guess I would ask for those who may be more informed on this topic, why is the city attorney putting forth this motion at the request of counsel with his, his or her report saying that it meets the legal test if it does not. Does anyone have any answers to that question? So I'd, I'd certainly like to hear from anyone who has more um, in-depth knowledge on that, that topic. Um, but I think for those who speak, this community is working to try to help facilitate people getting into shelters, getting into permanent housing, um, and getting access to resources. And as we heard tonight from uh, a wonderful organization um, that is doing just that. So, uh, you know, there's multiple sides to this topic. Um, so I'd like to hear if anyone has any input on the legality aspect of this topic um, and what the city council is considering right now. Anybody? Um, I, I know that that there were alternative motions that were uh, introduced. I know Council Member Bonin had an alternative motion. And I think maybe the wisest thing for us to do right now is to seek the answers to questions, compile lists of questions on this motion, the alternative motion, see if there's anything else we can come up with and revisit in our next meeting or use the homeless committee to take the comments and try to to pull together where we are so then our options would be that the maker of the motion could withdraw the motion or we could have a motion to postpone this motion to the next meeting those are our options uh as the as the maker uh sean mcmillan seat nine uh homeless chair issues chair uh I actually think I'm going to take that under good advisement and suggestion. I'd like to withdraw the motion. Okay, and does the second all agree to that? Basically, technically, yes, you do. All right, so then it's withdrawn and it can be re-agendized or something can be re-agendized for January, but it's like it never happened. Can, can, I, can I add one, one thing that is an act that could be a potential um, action that would be very helpful for the homeless that are living in our community. And that is that as many of us are aware, there is a winter shelter on Federal Avenue at the Armory that opens every winter. And it has a large capacity. However, 
The shelter does not accept walk-ins, except those that have been pre-screened and are former veterans, our veterans. Um, those are the only people that can walk into that shelter. There is a bus that picks up and brings homeless people from Venice to that shelter. And I don't know if it makes other stops. I was trying to find that out. But it would seem to me that we should be advocating for that bus or mm -hmm. another bus to be able to pick up homeless people within this area, which is so close to the armory, right, much closer right. than Venice, and be able to take them so that they can be housed in a warm and dry place during the winter. Okay, Barbara, maybe you could work with Sean and Mary to figure that one out and get back to us. Uh, my comment was going to be that obviously we need more information uh, and maybe to wait until the 24th because or whatever date it was going to go back because it might be pulled again that maybe they found out legally it's not going to go anywhere. So my my comment when everybody was through, that was going to be my comment. But since it's been withdrawn anyway, um, uh, we'll, we'll just keep it that way and, and come back in January uh, if there is indeed something uh, on the books for us to put on the agenda. Uh, there might be nothing then. It still might be up in the air, questions unanswered, maybe Carter steps in again, who knows? Um, so we're going to um, leave that as it is, and I'll hear from Mary and Sean prior to January's meeting, whether or not they want something on the agenda, and if so, what it is. So now back to Freddie. Where's Freddie? Are you there, Freddie? I'm here. So we're withdrawing this now. We're going to take it under advisement. We're going to do some more research. What about all these hands I have up now? Since this is done, what do we, do I, and it, obviously the, uh, the item's been closed. Do we listen to the, the do There's we- There's no item on the floor for them yeah. to speak to, Terry. This, oh. there, is, there is no item. So you'd just be moving forward with your agenda, which would okay. be item D. Uh, okay. Is that right? 6D, if I can, I'm squinting right now. Yes. Yeah, it's Barbara's going to do very, because Barbara's too late and we still got to do the rack stuff. And I okay. talked to her today and they, he's expecting us to get through that. And, okay. and, and it'll be 